No commercials, no subscriptions, no network, no rules, and at the end of the day, my friends, no comparison. And tonight, uh, no curve, because we're going to uh, explore a realm of the esoteric that I've wanted to discuss for some quite some time. Uh, and I've gotten really enamored with it over the last year or so, and uh, so it would seem like a natural thing to talk about, and especially with what's coming up next week, which I did not tease yet on the show, because uh, I may be buying uh, tonight's guest a drink next week, because I will be in attendance uh, next Thursday and Friday at the International Flat Earth Conference in Dallas, Texas. Yep. And tonight's guest uh, will be presenting there, and uh, he'll be, you know, one of the big, big names from the Flat Earth community uh, in attendance. So it's cool that we get to get him on the show here tonight, really a week out, because uh, I think by this time next week they'll all be kind of rocking and rolling uh, with the Flat Earth stuff down there in Dallas. And uh, as I said, I'll be in the mix. So our guest is Mark Sargent. He is essentially the face of modern-day Flat Earth research. Uh, he's like the face of the Flat Earth movement nowadays, pretty much. You probably saw him in the movie, uh, the Netflix documentary, Behind the Curve. He was pretty much the star of that movie. And uh, he became, you know, part of that movie because he created this viral hit uh, known as Flat Earth Clues that many, many, many people in the Flat Earth research community uh, credit with waking them up to this conspiracy theory. So with all that said, thank you very much for coming on the show, Mark. I've got like a million questions for you, uh, and just, you know, I'm really glad we could make it happen tonight. <laughs> thank, thank you, Tim. And I am so sorry. I've got to apologize sincerely to uh, you and all the listeners for being late. Uh, I, I'm totally embarrassed because I used to do, uh, I was in the industry that focused on time zones, and I completely screwed it up. You said nine, and I said, oh, it's, that's got to be seven o'clock West Coast. No, it is six o'clock West Coast time, nine o'clock your time. So there you go. Sorry about that. It's perfectly fine. Don't worry about it. Huh? Uh, we move on. Life goes on. Shit happens. Uh, as you may have surmised, you can say whatever you want on the show, so uh, oh, feel free to use adult language if need be. <laughs> uh, let's start out. With the bio, the background, who is Mark Sargent? How did you find out about this flat earth thing? How did you become a part of this community? I first got into it in the summer of 2014 when I was really bored. I was looking through conspiracies, thought I had seen it all, done it all, but there was something on my uh, bucket list, which I had never done, which was flat earth. And saw a guy, a video made by a German guy, a German channel called Cesar on YouTube, where he was saying that, well, the, the flight paths in the Southern Hemisphere don't make any sense unless it's some sort of flat disc-like world, and thought I could shut it down in a weekend. Nine months later, I'm staring at my computer going, it can't be flat, it can't be flat, it can't be flat, and said, you know what, the Internet Hive Mind is much more intelligent than myself. So I will create a series of videos out there, put them out, and say, okay, tell me where I screwed up. And so February of 2015, I made the Flat Earth Clues. Didn't think it would resonate. I honestly, I was just waiting for some academic to call me up and say, okay, here's where you screwed up. You can go back to your normal life now. And people just started calling me on a regular basis. Uh, just pe people that were interested in the topic, uh, media, and then subject matter experts. You know, people from all branches of the armed forces and surveyors and pilots. All started tracking me down and everything just started snowballing to where now you yeah. know the, the conference that you're going to go to and i know we'll talk about it in a bit um the, is our third annual united states conference <laughs> you know we did the first one in 2017 uh one in denver last year and then this one in dallas texas and uh i've done two books hundreds of interviews uh oh, 15 1600 videos on youtube and even shot a commercial in australia this year so go figure that's flat earth for you yeah yeah man you're remarkably prolific like i said you've become the face of uh this movement it didn't, uh, as you kind of said in the movie there uh you know it showed it kind of came to you it kind of happened to you it's yeah i didn't really like you went out to be mr flat earth no i didn't want to do it i was hoping that uh that matt boylan would do it otherwise known as math powerland you know that guy from montreal canada i honestly thought he was going to take point <laughs> I saw him, yeah. 
and it didn't that's not what it turned out to be uh, with the media media is notoriously lazy like a like a lot of things in life and once i did a few interviews and they came off as coherent and articulate enough people just tracked me down it's like oh yeah he'll do and so i just started getting more and more of those and it's like it's like all right fine i mean i won't shy away from it but at the same time i don't look for it i, I don't generally have to pick up the phone it just keeps happening and then once the the netflix documentary came out it was over then i was sunk uh, then people just wouldn't stop bothering me <laughs> for this like we need yeah. to find out what's happening with flat earth so i reroute now now part of my job is i reroute people uh media to other venues so they'll say hey do you got anyone in la do you have anybody in chicago or new york or london or germany or where you know africa and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's here's people you can talk to in your nor your neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, I've, I've, I'm continually surprised by how popular this is in other parts of the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, now I don't know. You probably don't know much about me, but I work for Coast to Coast AM. I'm their news director, so. Oh, cool. Uh, I cover the flat Earth constantly uh, at the website. Anytime anything happens with the flat Earth, uh, that's kind of how I got really interested in the in the field. Now I confess I'm not a believer in the flat earth, but I think we can get along pretty well and uh you know, I'm not interested in sort of like upending this thing. So don't <laughs> Oh no, no, it's cool. I <laughs> yeah, mean, and, I can and, imagine you talk to a lot of people who go, "What about this? What about that?" Like I don't really care about all that, you know right. what I'm saying? Well, it, it's funny you'd mention that because Coast to Coast was also helped a lot in in this. They con you know, so I made the clues in February of 2015. And one of George Norrie's producers contacted me just out of the blue in May of the same, you know, just a few months later because they had listened to uh, an interview I'd done on Ground Zero with, with Clyde Lewis. And it was right. one of the weirdest conversations ever because she knew nothing about me. And she said, hey, um, she goes, what's your book? And I go, I don't have a book. She goes, well, what's your DVD? I go, I don't have a DVD. And, and she's getting really frustrated. And finally, she's, she goes, fine, what's your website? And I go, look, I've only been doing this for a few months. Uh, I go, I don't even have a website yet. And and she goes, she goes, why am I talking to you? And I go, because look, I go, you called me. I don't know. Why are you talking to me? She goes, give me the, give me the five minute spiel. Go. And I, and I hit her five minutes of the best stuff I had at the time. And she goes, all right, you're on uh, a week from Thursday, you know, at the ungodly hour that, that he, that he does it at. And it, when, when I was on, even then it was really, uh, it seemed like it was fate because he, other than the, the opening line where he told me, he goes, just to let you and the audience know that I believe in the Apollo missions and I believe everything that NASA does, which was basically his warning to me. It's like, you can talk about flat earth all you want, but you can't talk about NASA. And then fast forward to just a couple months ago where Crow 777 got on coast to coast and he was bashing NASA and George at that point was backpedaling. He, George wasn't wasn't defending NASA like he used to. And it's like, wow, what a what a difference a few years makes. So, anyway. Yeah, times are, it's an interesting time. It's definitely an interesting time uh, world we're living in. So that was that's how you got involved with all this. So yeah, like I said, I just kind of wanted to sort of let, yeah let you know where I stood on all this. I'm not I'm fascinated by the community. I think it's really an interesting field yeah um, and like i said you have the right to believe whatever you want i'm not you sure. know, i'm not gonna try and argue about it with you and to me i've i don't know uh how much you've dug into this but i've like i've spent a significant amount of time studying the history of the flat earth theory back to rebotham and throughout all the different generations of people who in the uh have you know have been sort of kind of in your position in the past you're right. sort of like the sixth generation of this in a sense yeah uh now i want to start out I, I, I mostly, well, what what conspiracies were you into before all this, and are you still into those now? Because you said you were like, like you'd been there and done all. That. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. What, I, what was your your interest beforehand? Uh, but yeah, I was into. I had I have an opinion on just about every conspiracy you can think of at this point. Now, some I love and some I hate, and, and some I'm just like, eh, it doesn't really do anything for me. Um, the conspiracies I loved, you know, I, I cut my teeth, like I didn't even believe, I was kind of a late bloomer, so I didn't even believe, remember, I, I'm older, so back in the day when uh, I didn't even, before the internet, the, the first conspiracy most people heard about, uh, if you didn't hear about like the Apollo missions, was JFK. Uh, especially the movie by right. by Oliver Stone, which was, you know, his his probably the best work he's ever done. 
and it was it was amazing blend of real and simulated footage and it was it was it was mind blowing to me i didn't think that that literally nobody there were no lies on a large scale until i saw jfk and then other things came along you know like um 911 with the uh, uh, all the documentaries that revolved around 911 you know loose change and and those things and but then I got into other stuff. I, I focused mostly on the American conspiracies because you know, like everything else, America's got still the the best show going. And all, you know, I looked at <laughs> yeah. seriously. I mean, we're saying you, you can you can hate us if you want out there, but we're still the the greatest show on earth, uh, even though we're not what we used to be. Um, but every Amer ma major American war, I was I was into. But do I think that like Bigfoot had Elvis's baby? No. No, I don't. But at the same time, I so all the conspiracies. What Flat Earth did was it knocked everything down to a second tier, uh, second and third tier, to where beforehand I would. So now Flat Earth is absolutely the top of top of my charts, is because like, it's just physically so big. It's it's physically an umbrella that holds everything else. But if you come to me and say right, right. everything takes place on the flat Earth, effect. yeah, exactly. So if you Sorry. come to me and say, "Oh, yeah, I've got a new theory about the Loch Ness monster," uh, beforehand I'd be like, "Yeah." You know, but now I'd be like, yeah, you know what? Tell me, tell tell me what you got. And so, uh, but for me, my my top ones, um, Apollo has got to be the one of the biggest uh, because it's it's so fun to tear into. Nine Eleven is is big, but it you know touches on a lot of hot buttons. Uh, Pearl Harbor is a good one. I even came up with with my um you know the the new book I released. I even talked about one that I came up with an exclusive, uh, like a conspiracy nobody even talks about. Which would be uh, like, for example, the uh, the Panama Canal, and people you're saying, well, Panama Canal is not a conspiracy." I go, "Really? When you look at it a little more closely, actually, it is." Here's why, real quick. Give me give me sixty seconds on this at least. Which is go for it. Um, so we all know with major engineering projects, there's always you know accidents and people die. So like the Hoover Dam, a really really big engineering project in the United States. 70 people died during the creation of the Hoover Dam. Not a big surprise, for, you know, people falling off great heights or falling into big vats of cement. You know, people died, 70 people. And that was a big, big engineering project. Well, and that was, but most of them died from falling. So, well, the Panama Canal, that was just a big ditch. It wasn't even really that deep, right? So, but you know how many people died during the making of that? Better part of 6,000. And you're saying, wow, that's quite a wow. bit. Yeah, exactly. And it's like your eyebrow yeah. might have raised. And But then I tell you that, and you say, what did they die of? And I go, well, they died from malaria and yellow fever. And you're going, oh, well, you know, that's just the cost of doing business. And then I come back and I say, yeah, but what if they knew they were going to die? And meaning what, what, what I get is this. It's like the Americans, like a lot of things the Americans do, we didn't invent the Panama Canal. Actually, the, the people that started it was France. France lost 22,000 men trying to try to do it. And they, they were losing so many men that eventually the, the city Paris was protesting and they just pulled the whole thing. They just put down their shovel and said, oh, we're going home. The Americans step in and say, OK, if we invent like insect repellent and better mosquito netting and stuff like that, we can cut our losses down to 10,000. Let's say 10,000. And we're not talking about military. We're talking about civilians. So where as you say, where's the conspiracy? Right. The conspiracy is this. You have engineers and people they that didn't are, tell all those people that they could fucking die. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. If you tell them, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, there's like a one in eight chance that you're not coming back from this. <laughs> you know, that's that's higher than right. a lot of wars. <laughs> one in eight chance you're going to die. Would you still have the same number of volunteers? No. Now, this is where I people disagree with with me. And I look, I'm a big believer of the ends justify the means. In that, was the the men that we lost down there worth it for you know this the greatest military strategic choke point and turned out to be the most expensive toll road in history? Yeah, probably. I mean, we made a lot of money off that thing, and we gave it you know to Panama recently. But the point was, is there there's the very definition of conspiracy, and that is. When three or more people conspire together to hide something that the general public would either find illegal or at the very least unethical. And so, yeah, I, I was into tons of conspiracies and, and some I agreed with and some I didn't. There you go. Interesting. I never thought we'd get into talking <laughs> about the Panama Canal. There you uh, go. <laughs> this is, this is, uh, this is, yeah, I've been all in America for you folks. Um, okay. So let me, I, I, like I said, uh, I've got a really good handle on the history of the Flat Earth Movement, sure. uh, but I still, I actually have done some presentations at some conferences about the history of the Flat Earth Movement, <laughs> okay. so kind of like weirdly, <laughs> some, 
somehow I, I tell people I'm a flat earth movement supporter. I'm not a part of the field. I, I'm an observer. I study this as best I can, which is why I've really been excited about talking to you. Okay. But in the process, these people, I have, probably have a mini Mark Sargent situation on my hands because then they hit me with these questions, these technical questions about the mechanics of the flat earth theory. And every time I'm like, look, I don't know these things. So now, now that I have you on, sure. I'm just going to ask you these basic, and I understand that, and I apologize because you probably get these questions all the time. No, that's and, all right. And so just for the, for the, for the record and for, for my own sanity and, so I know the answer next time somebody bothers me about this. We'll, we'll take these off, okay? Sure, sure, hit me. What so got? what is under, what is under the, and I, again, I, this is like the longest preface for a series of questions <laughs> ever, but, and again, I realize, and please feel free to explain this more and elucidate on this point for me, right. that there are camps, I assume, there's no straightforward answer. This is all theoretical, so there's camps, you know, who I assume, have different points of view on the answers to these questions. So with that said, <laughs> let's get cooking here. Okay. What is under the flat earth? What is under the flat earth? No, it's a great question. Um, and, and actually, I wish more people would ask that because what's under the, the flat earth goes into what flat earth is not. Meaning a lot of people will say, well, is, is flat earth this giant flat dinner plate that's flying through space? And I say, no, there's, there's no space that you, the space is just an illusion. The flat earth is just a giant box. It's a, it's a structure, meaning it's a room with walls and a floor and a ceiling. And it just happens to have a big circular lake in the middle of it. Now, what's underneath it? Well, um, what's underneath the, the, what's, when you dig down as a globe, what's that? Which is why I made the clue that touched on the, the deepest hole ever drilled. Remember, if, if the, the mainstream science says the deepest hole, you know, when you, to get to the center of the earth, you have to go down 4,000 miles. And you say, well, what's the deepest they've gotten? Well, the deepest they've gotten is only eight miles. Not, not, a th not 2,000, not 1,000, not 100, not even 10, eight miles. And then, so what are you talking about? We see these wonderful artist interpretations of the cross section of the world, you know, with red and orange and yellow and the white center, and they're perfectly one thousand miles spread. And the mantle and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's like, how do they know that? They don't. In fact, if you look at the small print, if you even go to Wiki, the science will tell you. It's like, yeah, we have no idea what's down there. But what they don't, what science will never do is they won't put a giant question mark on the inside of the globe. So we, when people say, oh, what, what's beneath it? It's like, I don't know, tell me. Uh, we've only dr drilled down eight miles. Now, if people say, oh, how thick is it? It's like, well, I don't know. You know, you wouldn't, given how, how little we can actually dig down, I would say you wouldn't even have to make it deeper than 50 miles. Because remember, we're talking about a, a snow globe, a terrarium, a planetarium, this little model that could be sitting on, the, on a lab table somewhere. So, right. you know, right. what's, what's beneath it? What's underneath it? Don't know. Ask, ask science why, uh, you know, why they can't drill down farther than eight miles. You might get a better idea. Okay, so it's not, <coughs> it's not sitting in space. No, good Lord, no, no, no. That's that's the thing. I, please, re, I got to reinforce that. There, we're not talking, there, there doesn't have to be space. Meaning, if you are in a planetarium right now, I know that dates me. Nobody, if you guys don't know what a planetarium is, it's a building that simulates space. You go inside, and you can see the stars and the moon and the planets going around, but they're just pretty, pretty lights on the sky, and that's all we're talking about here. It's like, yeah, do you see the moon on the ceiling of a planetarium? Yes, you, yes, you do. Can you land on it? No, you cannot. It's not even three dimensional. You can't even, you can't even touch it. That's what we're, we're talking about a similar version right. of that. If space, if you can fake space then that's all you need. If 99.9% .9 of the public believe in the illusion, that's all you need is the illusion. There doesn't have to be space. Again, not to go biblical, but uh, if God created the sun and the moon, it was NASA that told you how big they were and how far they were away. How's that? All right, there you go. That's like a sound bite, right? There you go. I, I, um, I live in sound now bites. I know, exactly, yeah. You're well, well versed in it. I respect that. Um, <laughs> Now, in the movie, you say, the question, next question, is dome or no dome? And I watched the movie again last night, and I was pleasantly surprised to see that you actually did address that in the movie. I must have missed it the first time around, because you said 70% of the people, roughly, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, are, are on Team Dome. Team Dome. All the other 30% are other. Right. So, is, is, that, 
I guess sort of elucidate on that, extrapolate a little. Yeah, bit yeah, yeah. On, there's on so, for, so the argument is whether or not there's a dome and yeah, it's not. It yeah, seems nobody, to be that nobody. More people believe in the dome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So most people will believe. Everybody believes that it's flat, but you know, in our communities. Right. But there's a there's a big division, and seventy thirty is pretty big. Um, people that believe that it's yeah. covered by a dome like structure, otherwise known in the in the Bible as the firmament, uh, or it's not. And the, the the people that don't believe in it usually co go, fall into the camp of the people that don't like to be constricted. They don't like to be fenced in. It's like, man, you're just be getting me all claustrophobic. And I have people said that. It's like you're turning the, the, the universe, this giant universe, into a one-room studio apartment. And and they don't like that. And so it's like, why does it have to be domed? Why why do we have to have this this sealed in like this? And I say, well, the, the easiest answer for that would be the atmosphere versus the vacuum of space. And meaning if you don't have a dome, you're still going to run into that problem. And uh, I'll, tr I'll give you a simple version of it, which is can is if the vacuum of space is really it, law of thermal dynamics, meaning you can't have pressure next to non pressure. There's without a barrier. Pressure needs a container, plain and simple. And we have atmospheric pressure where we are right now. And you're saying, well, what does that mean? It's like, well, where does our atmosphere end and the vacuum of space begin? And meaning the vacuum of space is very, very powerful. It's no pressure. There's nothing out there, supposedly. So why does it just rip the atmosphere right off our world entirely? And you say, well, it's gravity. And then I come up with this little, little experiment for you, which is imagine that you're sitting where you're sitting right now and you have a second floor above you. I don't know if you have a second floor above you right now. Just say there is. And you turn the floor above you into a vacuum chamber. It doesn't even have to be that big. Just to be, just be as big as your room. That's it. And you put a cork on the ceiling and you pull it. You pop it. What happens? Instantly, violently, there will be an equalization between your room and the, the vacuum upstairs. It will be, it, you'll, the air will be, it'll be super, super instant. It's not like the movies. Uh, if anyone has doubt, you can look up on YouTube, uh, vacuum versus steel rail car. It's staggering how fast it is. And the, you probably black out and probably even die. And you say, Mark, what's your point? My point is, is that why didn't the gravity that's in your room right now keep the atmosphere in your room instead of going upstairs? Because a hundred times out of a hundred times, it's going to equalize. And, you know, no different than blowing up a balloon and letting go. Letting go. A hundred times out of a hundred times, the, the pressure in that balloon is going to send that balloon flying across the room. You say, okay, what's the point? My point is, is that, well... It's the exact same gravity that is in your room right now, and you just have a much, much bigger vacuum chamber, which is space. How does that work? How does how how is that happening? Because everyone, everybody, every scientist will agree. It's like, oh yeah, if you have a vacuum chamber above you, it'll equalize. I go, well then, what about space? And then they just shut up. <laughs> they got nothing. It's like, uh, because of the. I go, really? Do, do you have an explanation for this? And they don't. So, the, sorry, the, that's the long version of why dome versus no dome. The only way that can work is, okay. is if you're in a dome, if you're in a pressurized system, which also goes into the whole um, greenhouse gases thing, which anyone is like, oh, do you believe in climate change? I go, well, the greenhouse gas argument makes a lot more sense if you're actually in a physical greenhouse, if it's an enclosed pressurized system. So, there it is. Okay. Uh, so, I guess, uh, well, what is the... What's the dome made of? Well, that's dealer's choice on that one. Um, we were I, I can tell you what, what we talked about in the clues, which was whatever it's made out of, we tried to bust through it for four years using atomic weapons, the United States and the Soviet Union. What could stop an atomic weapon? I don't know, a heavy element that we don't know of, a heavy water that we haven't seen yet, uh, electromagnetic field, a unified field frequency okay, so based it's not field. Like glass, no right? no no it's not gonna be glass <laughs> you know what I'm saying? it's not okay whatever whatever it is is big is thick enough and powerful enough to stop megatons because that's what they used in 1958 okay and they couldn't punch through it and this dome who created it or could it just be a natural thing <laughs> well that, that's the other thing, and that is if it's a domed like structure, which means it's completely inorganic, if you're looking, if you're in a physical building, then the question of who built it, which is a very big question, and I, and I don't want to take it lightly. Yeah. And that is, I mean, ultimately, isn't the answer fucking God? Like, how well, you, yeah, it, it's, really you, know, but you, maybe you have it. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're really maybe coming down theory. between one of two camps there, which is, okay, it's either an older civilization that's much more powerful and much wiser than ourselves, or it's the divine. 
And at that point, you're kind of just splitting hairs because it's kind of like the, the difference right, between exactly. magic and science, you know. The, you know, the argument there's there's almost no difference between magic and science it's just a question of time uh in this case you know if it's an older civilization well if they have presented themselves you know new churches would pop up immediately because of those civilizations so one of those two all right uh and so then you kind of already answered this one i take it but uh we can't leave this flat earth no, it appears that we are, and that, that goes into a whole other thing, which is why. Why are we trapped in here? The, so it's a question, it depends on your point of view, glass half full type of thing. Are we a box of kittens that should be protected from whatever is outside there that could harm us, or are we a box of scorpions that should never ever be let out <laughs> for any circumstance? And I don't know, I tend to go right. with the scorpions because we've made fun of ourselves so many times. Look at look at the early science fiction movies, like the um, the first version of the, the Day the Earth Stood Still, where, uh, you know, a bunch of older civilizations showed up and said, yeah, you guys aren't getting out. <laughs> There's no way. You guys would just rip everything to shreds. So, uh, yeah, I, for, for me, that I, I think it's a school. I think more than anything, you know, the, the world can only be one of three things. It could be... Uh, it, uh, one or more of a combination of either uh, entertainment, uh, education, or in, uh, confinement. And entertainment, well, there's a lot of people that aren't having fun here, so I don't think it's a solid entertainment. <laughs> uh, confinement, it's it doesn't really... F I mean, people have talked about a prison planet, but it's an awfully nice prison planet. The only people that are, the things that are screwing it up are us. So for me, it kind of feels like school. It kind of feels like, you know, a combination. When you're in school, sometimes you're having fun. Sometimes, you, you know, all the time you're kind of confined. But you're there mostly to learn something. And I think that's I think that's why we're here. So. All right. And uh, so also now, I, I, I'm sure this, your research community, the Flat Earth community, kind of bumps up against this in, this, in a way, in a weird way. Because uh, you both sort of occupy the same realm of the fringe. Yeah. So... What about aliens? Can they come here, or are they are they unable to? Oh yeah, them? no, no. I, I can they I, penetrate whatever it is that's keeping us. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Stuck? That's that's also the bigger question, um, which is uh, because I I was a big aliens guy. Big, you know, b watched um, ancient aliens every weekend. I was one of the few people I think bought the box DVD sets, and and I thought it was really really cool. Um, but I don't believe in aliens in what they used to be described as. Now, do I think there's things flying around up there? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, anyone has any doubt, buy a decent pair of night vision binoculars and just start staring in the sky for a few nights. And you'll see it really, really fast, what's up there. I mean, the sky is just crawling. Right, I use aliens kind of like... I use aliens as the catch-all of sort of like, uh, you know, intelligent beings visiting yeah. and Yeah. Now, do, do so I think... I you know, <laughs> where they come from, I don't know. Uh, no, I, I hear you. Um, for me, it's they don't, they don't come from Mars and Jupiter and Venus anymore. I think they're just older versions of us. I think they're the, uh, the other occupants that used to rent this apartment. And that now the question that the, what your question is, though, is like, are they are they trapped in here with us or can they come and go as they please? I'd like to right, th right. I'd like to think they're I'd like to think that some of them I think it's both. I think that some of them are trapped in here with us, but I think there's others, maybe some of the higher, more enlightened <laughs> beings can, can probably come and go. You know, I think there's a hierarchy out there, which we don't know what there is. I mean, who knows? There could be hundreds of, of different species, if not thousands. Uh, but there's definitely some, I think, that are trapped in here with us because there's a lot of them using our skyways at night, and there's too many sightings. Have been the, They've been with us since the freaking beginning. Anyone has any doubt, forget about right. Roswell. Look up something called the, um, the 1561 Nuremberg event, which was just fascinating, where two space armadas just went at each other over Germany on a wonderful uh, April morning. And they were they fought so long that you know remember there was no cameras back then but the sketch artists still existed and they drew out the whole thing and it's still you know newspapers yeah. in the archives it's beautiful so all right yeah interesting yeah I had to be I had to jump in there in a sense to be paranormally correct because nowadays I don't know how much time you spend with uh, the UFO community but if you say aliens. As the cat, people get, oh, no, you can't, you know, hey, it's not aliens, it's not aliens. Like, I'm not saying it's classic <laughs> aliens, folks. You well, again, believe I, <laughs> I, I believe, I believe there's, there's ships flying around, yes. Who's manning them? I do not think, again, I don't think they're from other planets. I just think right, they're right. from other times. Yeah, I, no, 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 yeah. I, in, I, I hear you. I hear you. 
I was more just making a commentary about our the, our current state of uh, UFO world. And yeah, I know like, the same. The same. Very, and I know it's good, in, I'm sure it's kind of like that in your field too, where it's like people are, you know, you, you if you say the wrong, <laughs> if you say like I said, you got to be paranormally correct. Oh, yeah. if you say the wrong thing, people are like, hey. You know. Oh, you no. You want to. You want to have. Subscribe to the ETH. It's like, oh, relax, dude. Uh, I just mean aliens in general. Oh, hell, <laughs> hell, man. We we become I use it interchangeably. We become so nitpicky. You want to have fun? Go into like uh, some of the Star Trek forums, and watch watch guys just rail against each other over, over the smallest minutia of things. It's like, oh yeah. Uh, one of one of my good friends is in a heated ar- video argument about the classification of Romulan ships. And, you know, it's, I mean, bit literally going all the way back to the 60s series about exactly what they call these certain types of ships. And it's like, come on. But at the same time, you know, you, you got to get it right, I suppose. <laughs> anyway. And the final sort of uh, basic uh, mechanical question, I guess, is uh, the, I'm sure you've seen the meme, the big joke. It's like, uh, it's like the flat earth and then all the other planets are round. So, yeah. Uh, what what what's the take on these other planets as far as uh, the flat Earth community goes? Where do they stand? Oh on, no no the the planets you know, are just the status of these. Oh things. yeah, the planets are just lights in the sky. Uh, in fact, I get I get that question all the time. Uh, in fact, one of my favorites was I was arguing with a British astronomer who uh, was saying, "Well, you know, I've seen the moons of Jupiter through my telescope." I go, "That's awesome. That's really really great." I go, "Go to a planetarium, take a pair of binoculars, look at Jupiter while you're in a planetarium." I go, does the, do the binoculars make Jupiter on the ceiling more or less real? He goes, well, that's not the point. You're in a building. I go, actually, that is my point. Because when you walk out of that building, who's to say you just didn't walk into a much bigger building? So planets, yeah, they look spherical. So does the sun. So does the moon. But they're just lights in the sky that we assume are spherical. I mean, yeah, by all intents and purposes. Remember, we're talking about a giant illusion. And we are susceptible to it. So they were meant to look spherical. But that's part of the plan. That's part of, you know, expanding our imaginations, which is we, you know, you make it look like it's infinite. And I'll give you another quick example. Um, you ever been to Disneyland? No. Yeah. I'm for, uh, yeah, Disneyland. Okay, okay perfect. Disney do you ever do you ever go to the... Um, <laughs> what? I don't know if it makes a difference, but... Well, no, no. Well, Disney, Disneyland, <laughs> Disney World, same same thing. They they got mostly the same rides. And one of the rides, one of the older rides, one of the original rides is called Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, it's the same one that eventually they based the movies off of. And in that, the one of the final things in that ride is you get to a harbor. And we're talking, you know, there's a ship off into the distance firing on the, on the shore... And it's done very, very realistically. And you have no idea when you're looking at that ship out there, how far away it is, what it's made out of. And, and you know, you have you have no sense of distance because it's done very realistically. And, and the point is, is that, look, that was just done with paint and a wood and a few lights. That's all. And, and we, we, you know, our opt, the human beings have a, we absolutely will fall for illusions all the time. Uh, the same people that um, uh, not just will f- get ill if they're watching a roller coaster on television, get ill playing Mario Kart. You know, we, we've got we've got real visual problems. And so, yeah, when you look up and you see a spherical thing, fine, it looks spherical, but we can simulate these, this thing all day long. There you go. Yeah. There you go. All right. That's kind of the basic nuts and bolts questions that I had uh, about this. This is the ones people always bring up. Oh, yeah. Now. Sure. The guy in the chat. He pointed out, uh, and this connects sort of to one of, one of the other talking points I have in here, is that uh, I didn't realize, personally, I think maybe other people who hear about this don't realize it too much either. I didn't really realize until I dug more into this how uh, how how this is like a, a deep religious connection to a lot of this. And the guy in the chat said that a lot of the stuff you described sounds like uh, the book of Genesis. So yeah. talk a little bit about that because it's uh, that's kind of – uh, remarkable to me, and like I was looking at the, I hate to even feed the trolls, but like I was looking at the Flat Earth uh, website, which is, uh, <laughs> actually that's how I found your phone number, I googled your name in the Flat Earth, and that's the first thing that came up sure. for the conference, and of course some someone in the chat was like complaining about uh, that, that like 80% of these people are super uh, Christian fundamentalists or whatever. Right. So that that's kind of when the light bulb went off in my head, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, this is really – there's like a real sort of underpinning of like deep religiosity 
with this flat earth movement. I didn't catch that from you when I watched the movie. Um, you know, you didn't you seem to be more bent on the scientific end of things. Right, or right, really right. more and this is a compliment, more on the public relations end of things. I think that, you know, every field needs a face and you do that very well. So I guess the question is <laughs> You know, it was kind of a meandering, long observation more than a question. But like, talk about that—the religiosity that's in, in, you know, baked into this thing. Oh well, yeah, and and it's not—it's not eighty percent, although it feels like it sometimes because the uh, the, the strong Christian side of flat Earth—they're um, very enthusiastic. And the reason, well, heck, the reason why uh, the documentary didn't talk on it, uh, really discuss much of it, is because they, you know, they're they're big believers of the uh, separation of church and state. But at least, for the record, at least half of the members are strong Christians. Now, the other four major religious houses are represented, of course. But since we're in the United States, Christianity, you know, takes a takes a higher profile. Uh, but yeah, what, yeah, when I when I first started making the clues, I had a lot of Christians that were emailing me directly, saying you're dancing around the the issue of God and the Bible and and what the Bible says about this, and you really should address it. And finally, I made a clue called the, uh, "They're Hiding God," and they um they they really responded favorably to it, to where a lot of religious prophecy people were started to do their own research in research that I had not done. And they went through the King James with a fine tooth comb. And when they were done, they said, you know what? Other than one verse, which even then is under, uh, under interpretation, it is a flat earth book. Meaning uh, out of all the, all, you know, we can go into Genesis. I'll, I'll throw, I'll rattle off a few for you. But there's, there's one passage in the Bible, Isaiah 40, 22, which says, he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Which is interesting because uh, circle is not ball, it's not sphere, it's not globe. It's a very, very different word. Circle is a dinner plate. Circle could also be a hubcap. It could be your dining room table. Um, but there's some interesting stories. Other than that, the rest of the Bibles tends to lend credence that the, the it is a flat earth book. Uh, going straight into Genesis, um, uh, the firmament, uh, Genesis 1.8, uh, the, the, a, a barrier, a dome-like structure that separates the waters above and the waters below, which I thought was very interesting because it's like, well, waters below, are they talking about the oceans? Like, well, maybe not even just the oceans. Remember, what we're breathing in right now is just a thin version of water. You know, it's, if, if water is H2O, we're bringing in, breathing in actually N4O. We're bringing, breathing in mostly nitrogen. It's We're breathing in kind of a soup. Um, other stories in the Bible would be, uh, like the story of Joshua or Joshua asked God to hold the sun and the moon in the sky for an extra day so he could slay more enemies, which is interesting because it's way more difficult to, uh, to do that from a, a geo, a, um, heliocentric model where you have to stop the, the sun and the earth and all the plants. I mean, that's a lot of physics you've, you've got to mess with here, hitting the brakes on that way. But if it's, yeah. if it's an enclosed system, you're just hitting pause on a television for, for lack of a better term. You're just pausing the, what the sky that's, that's easy. Uh, yeah. But my favorite of all of all the biblical stories would have been the uh, the Tower of Babel, which I which is why I put it in the clues, even though I didn't actually use the word Babel, which was uh, if you guys back in Genesis, uh, the you know, we're talking about Genesis here. Uh, there was the we all know or some of us know that the story of the Tower of Babel is there was an older civilization that predates us and they were very intelligent and very resourceful and they had a lot of technology and they were trying to build a tower to basically reach heaven to reach this you know to reach the throne of god and they they were going to do it in fact and the story goes that god looked down it's like oh man they're going to actually pull this thing off I, we got we got to intervene and so he goes in and he changes the 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 languages he, he gives everybody all sorts of different languages and then scatters them all over the place right. and then the tower was never finished and fell into ruins and i'm sure maybe he destroyed it later the point was is that if it was a globe Where's that tower going exactly? Because remember, the, the, the Earth is supposedly spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, and it's going around the sun at 60,000 miles an hour, and so on and so on and so on. So that tower would be just this little needle sticking off of the, uh, off the globe, and it's not even staying in the same place twice. It doesn't even make sense on a globe, but if it's on some sort of flat, if it's on the inside of a snow globe, it's going straight up, it's going to hit the ceiling, and that's it, game over. 
So between those stories and all the other stuff that's out there, the Earth is fixed and immovable. The you know the Earth hangs on nothing, and and all the other passages in there, right. the, the religious community just jumped on it. To where I mean, the yeah, conference yeah. we're going to. If you when you go to Dallas, assume that there's a fifty percent chance whoever's sitting next to you, strong Christian. Yeah, it's interesting. It's really interesting. Uh, I I noticed in my own research that. There was even like, at some point in time, the flat earthers were, I want to say like around when the Zion, Illinois situation was going on, uh, but they were, they, they like, I, I had a sort of like a distaste for um, creationism or creationists because the creationists had, had, um, had, had accepted the roundness of Earth. Right. So, like, to the flat earthers, they they argued that the creationists, you know, they weren't they weren't even they weren't OG creationists. They they had they had uh, you know they had made made some adjustments. Yeah, the con- flat con- earthers were like, no, we we stick to exactly how it is. Yeah, concessions as they were. Yeah, that was very interesting because mm. I think at one point I think yeah. it was just an oversight. Uh, well, it's, uh, maybe unless it's, that's another conspiracy where the church it's like, well, science is making it a globe, but it really doesn't change the Bible, so we're just going to go with it. And you know, you do that for five hundred years, and you know, people no no different. People are willing to defend it. However, there are a lot of pastors now, a lot of Bible literalists that have to look at this, and it's really difficult for pastors. I feel bad for them because they have to remember you only have one verse, Isaiah forty twenty two, and you're trying to use that like it has veto power against every other book, including oh, I don't know Genesis, pretty important. And it's not, and and people, they're getting asked this all the time, and some are making the leap, and some aren't. But the ones that aren't are just worried about peer pressure. They're worried about, what what do I do if my congregation, if I tell my congregation, oh yeah, by the way, uh, you know, we're going to we're gonna go from a stance that the world is actually flat now, again. And, you know, they're, they're just, it's, it's, peer pressure is a powerful thing. Right. Yeah. Um... Well, it's very interesting. I just find the whole thing, uh, like I said, very interesting in yeah. a sense. Uh, tells you a lot about people and everything, you know? Very true. Uh, now, the question, now this question I feel like I'm going to be asking a lot in Dallas. Um, and I, I, I will start with you, and I'll probably ask, like I said, a lot of people this question. Because this kind of gets to the core of what I'm interested in here, and that is, like, why get the cat? does this matter so much to you, Mark? Like, why, what difference does it make if the Earth is flat around? Like, we, you, you have to, if everything, not, nothing would change, right? Because <laughs> it's, it's all being held together pretty much the same way. It's not like, uh, it's not like sort of, for an example, like an aliens thing or something like that, where they were like, oh, wait a minute now, what, you know, there's uh, other people out there and everything. So, like, why, what is, what, you know, what is it about this question, this, this, theory or something that has captured your imagination so much well because the the biggest thing for me and uh, i can't speak for everybody but i can speak for some of them is that it gives people purpose meaning remember science tells you that you you want to boil it down to it to its finest science tells you that you are living on a tiny rock which is flying through space in multiple velocities in an un- impossible empty universe and you mean nothing. You were in a complete accident that was created from the Big Bang. There is no purpose. There is no nothing. And matter of fact, why don't you just jump off a bridge right now? Because you, your, your life is literally random and has there's nothing to it. Whereas the flat earth is the complete opposite. That flat earth, even just by its shape, by default, means that it was created. And if it was created, then it was built by someone. Now, if you don't want to believe in in Santa Claus in a bathrobe on a Sunday morning, that's fine. You don't have to believe in that. But at the very least, there's a power greater than you, greater than any government. And this power has built this particular place for you, specifically for you. It makes the world way more intimate and it makes the universe just, you know, the, the whole concept of the cosmos just for you. You know, the giant, the, you know, the stars and the planets and, and everything is just a, a giant clock system that was built for this world. And it gives people this 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 sense of community and uh, a reason for being here, a reason to get up in the morning and find, you know, look for other things. It really excites people. And 
I initially felt that when I when I first got into it, and but what was really amazing was all the emails and phone calls and people I met at the conferences and meetups. They all came to me and said, "Yeah, yeah," and and well, you know, not, not to dig back into the church thing too much, but it has become a huge huge recruiting tool for any for all religions, not just not just Christianity, and because it changes your mind spiritually, and it's it's a it's a wonderful thing. So there you go. All right, yeah. Well, I get that impression from watching the movie about sort of that sense of community. Um, you know, it seems to compare it, I guess, in a sense, from my observations of all these other communities, it seems like, I mean, there's sort of an upbeat nature right now in the UFO world because of all the stuff that's been going on the last year or two. But right. for the most part, a lot of these fields are kind of downtrodden. They've been really kind of, uh, you know, it, it's been a long slog for them. <laughs> So yeah. there's a sense, a different sort of sense, and you mentioned in the movie of this positivity that's sort of bubbling up in the flat earth thing as compared to a lot of these other, uh, you know, communities. Like you said about uh, how, you know, they don't make like cheerful folk songs about 9-11 and stuff like that, but right. they do with, uh, with the flat earth thing. Right. Which is also, well, I'll get to that later. I have a point about that, but uh, I don't want to, I don't want to jump too far ahead in my notes here. So let me, let me sort of reset in a sense. And ask you, uh, do you have a theory about who is behind all this? You kind of like alluded to it, but, uh, you know, or is it just still all sort of theoretical? So, there, sorry, did I lose you? Sorry, sorry about that. You, you dropped off for like five seconds. Weird. Well, what's your theory on who is, well, on who is behind this? We kind of talked a little bit about sort of like who created this. It's, it's kind of like backpedaling on the same point so let me let me pivot here and ask you how many people do you think like who knows let's get to that who knows right. not including the flat earth community okay so don't inflate the numbers right <laughs> who who knows that the earth is flat Out, outside of the flat earth um, let's start with that outside of the flat hmm? earth not that many people know it all and and that goes that flies in the face of a lot of critics from science as well. This would have to be the biggest conspiracy. And you're talking about all astronomers and all astrophysicists and all scientists and all pilots. Like, no, none of those people have to know anything. This is one of this isn't like the Manhattan Project where you were refining uranium into um, fissionable material for the United States government when you had hundreds of thousands of people working in different parts of the country. This is something where compartmentalization is key and less is more. Meaning need to know is absolutely law. So like 99% of NASA would not have to know anything. The guys that build the fuel systems and turn the wrenches and polish things, HR, none of those guys have to know anything. It's just the telemetry guys and, and whoever's you know ordering the telemetry guys to do it. Um, when it comes to the military, most military people wouldn't have to know. Even the astronauts nowadays, you wouldn't necessarily need to know because it's too much of a burden on them. I think the Apollo astronauts knew, and that's why they all crawled into bottles and became recluses and, and were really cryptic all the way till their dying day. Um, but the astronauts now, I think they're just Air Force employees that signed the disclosure agreement and they don't have clearance. No different than like a spy that goes out and shoots somebody and does an assassination, right? They're just told, look, you go, go to this rooftop, you point your rifle there, and you shoot the guy. They don't, you know, you're not paid to know about the political intrigue behind it. You don't, they're not paid to know the backstory or the broader picture. It's like, why are you killing this guy? What happens if this guy dies? And all the other things that are tied to it. So when it comes to the people that know, very, very few. I mean, like, would Trump know? Not necessarily. I mean, what the, the last president, I think, with any real power was Dwight D. Eisenhower. So would you would you even tell Trump? Now, would not necessarily. Would they suspect things? Yeah, maybe. Uh, but most people wouldn't have to know. So do higher level NASA people know? Sure. Do people with bank accounts so large that you can't even count them? And we're talking octaves above people like Bill Gates and Paul Allen. Maybe those guys, but not Bill Gates. Why would you tell him? Fine, he has uh, $50 billion. Who cares? 
That's just numbers. It, it doesn't, you know. So would like Elon Musk now because he's trying to fly rockets up to nah, up to the moon. I think he's Elon he, he I, allegedly sent a car into space. Yeah, allegedly that. sent a car into space. He, Elon, you wouldn't even have to tell him everything. Now he may suspect, but until it's kind of like the um, the jilted wife syndrome where until you absolutely get a debriefing that's put in front of you, there's always room for doubt. And if you have room for doubt, you can sleep pretty soundly. Now, Elon Musk is a special case because his private space program is kind of being coddled by NASA. He supposedly gets to use some of NASA's launch pads, even though it's a complete conflict of interest with NASA you know, and their government budget. So would he even he have to know? Eh, maybe, maybe. Sure, I mean, but to what, to, to how instrumental he is to hiding it, I don't know. The, the short version is this, very few people would need to know for sure. There's probably people out there that suspect, but they, you know, if you put them under a lie detector, a gun to their head, they probably, you know, aren't going to be able to give you much. Um, but the rest, but the majority of the... saying like less than 100? Would you say less than 100? No, no, I'd say, I'd say it's thousands, but not, definitely not, uh, uh, ah, okay. not, not... So, so like I, all over... <laughs> No pun intended. So, like all over the world, right? Uh, like different, different well, yeah, yeah. I mean, brokers, the, the people uh, across the world, if you will, across the world, yes, uh, yeah. So, less than six figures, I would say anywhere between ten thousand, fifty thousand. That's just a rough guess. Uh, but, but remember, if it was me that was doing it, I would keep it as low as possible, at least you know, getting the whole picture because it's it's too dangerous. This sort of topic, it's such a cool secret it's such a great secret that you don't want it you just don't want it getting leaked out too much because it just blow i mean people the reason why it's spread is because the people that in our community that really get into it we get so pumped up about it we want to tell people imagine if you had absolute concrete yeah. proof yeah you'd absolutely want to tell people so. all right yeah okay so thousands of people yeah um I really, you, you surprised me in a good way with your answer to the last question about why it matters, because you didn't, you didn't really like, uh, and I, I, I like this, so <laughs> that you didn't express any sort of like anger at the fact that uh, what you see as this enormous hoax has been, has been, you know, put upon the human race. Oh, you yeah. There's no yeah, anger the, from you about and, this. Well, and that, that's, that goes into the whole, um, cliche angry conspiracy person which is you know yeah oh yeah you're absolutely right you know, it's like oh man because the government's keeping us down and they're keeping us big people should know the truth and we should rage against it it's like well i mean that's a little short-sighted i mean for one i mean something like this it could be being done for the greater good and that is we won't know until it's finally revealed why they you know they kept it a secret i i've got a pretty good idea because i would have done it myself and that is the general public back in 1960. We're talking about a secret that wasn't known for sure until about 1960. And then when they figured it out, it's like, is the general public ready? Nope. <laughs> no. And nor, nor do we have the means to tell them in the way that we can control the dissemination of information. Meaning, you know, back in 1960, you, yeah. had, you had three television channels, you had some radio, and you had some newspapers. That's it. You definitely didn't... Have, I mean, think of what we have now. We have high-speed internet, we have social media, we have six billion smartphones. You could pick that, you know, you could fire off the same story. You know, the old saying, you know, get your story straight. You could get your story straight to everybody in a very, very short amount of time. Less than 30 minutes, you could blanket everything. And that's what I think they've been waiting for. I don't think this secret could have been kept forever. It's kind of like uh, trying to hide cigarettes from your roommate. Oh, you can shuffle it around here and there, but sooner or later they're going to accidentally run into it or not accidentally run into it. And that's what I think they're, they're doing. I think that sooner or later there's like, okay, how long can we keep this a secret? And when we're ready, how are we going to push it out to the public? Which, you know, a lot of the conspiracy people say, well, you know, Flat Earth is, is disinfo because it's being allowed to happen. And they're absolutely right. We have gotten almost no resistance from the powers that be. In fact, in some ways, we're being cultivated by them. And YouTube, I mean, if you want look, I come from a software background. If you wanted to shut down Flat Earth or severely stunt it, you could do it in two seconds through, you know, Google owns YouTube. And between just those two companies, you could severely reduce the amount of exposure of Flat Earth. And it's been the exact opposite. YouTube has promoted us for three years right, straight. Right. Only this year did they start pulling. And again, they did, they did not hit the brakes on us. All they did was take the foot off the gas. People are still, you know, getting paid from Google for, for making YouTube videos. None of the Flat Earth channels have been shut down because of Flat Earth. 
It's it, they we saturated the market so heavily that even our residuals are right now. We still got huge channels that's like, wow, flat Earth. I'm gonna make my very first flat Earth video. It's like, where you been for the last four years? So uh, yeah, so no, I have no, I have yeah, no, yeah, that's, I have no yeah. anger against what's you know what you know the the conspiracy. Anyone you know the 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 larger picture here is I think there's something bigger than flat Earth that's coming down coming down the road. I think that flat Earth is necessary for something that's bigger than it. And there's only a couple of things that could be. One would be the the revealing of an older civilization, or I don't know, the meaning of life itself. So, anyway. Wait a minute. So you're saying <clears throat> I didn't see this coming. So you're saying you think there's some something bigger than the flat Earth because you've said the flat Earth is your that's your waypoint. Oh that's yeah. Your center. So you're saying you think this? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you think, think there's something. I think flat Earth, flat Earth. I've Tell seen. Tell me what these things are, Mark. Tell me what, are, what are these possibilities. You kind of alluded to it, but extrapolate. Well, uh, okay. Think about it this way: if flat Earth opens minds, we we've seen this time and time and time again. With with flat Earth, if you can get into flat Earth, your mind is open to everything. I think that flat Earth, if you use the analogy, um, flat Earth is the the picture frame for the canvas that we haven't seen yet. Or if you want a boxing reference, uh, flat Earth would be the left jab before the big right hook. You're like, okay, what's the big right hook? Very limited choices here, because we're talking about you know flat Earth is already a game changer, so literally. So what would be bigger than the flat Earth? Um, one would be the revealing. Of, if I had, if I had to take a couple quick guesses. Uh, one would be the revealing of an older version, an, an older civilization. If you want to use the term UFO or aliens. Right, you keep coming back to this, yeah. Uh, let that, me ask you about this older civilization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, 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 times, if, we're not the, me... if we're not the first people to rent this apartment, and I don't think we are by any stretch. I mean, you know, even, even mainstream shows like Ancient Aliens, they touch on that all the time. It's like, look at the sunken cities off of Japan right, and sunken right, cities right, off right. of India. Uh, Bosnian pyramids, Bimini Road, the, the real pyramids, and so on and so on. Our bro unbroken history only goes back 5,000 years, and then everything gets really, really scattered. And then carbon dating, you can pretty much throw, throw that out the window. So is it possible that we will get some sort of revelation, some sort of reveal that's like, okay, here is your place in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but to do that, you can't just do it with us because we, no one's going to, it's like, no one would believe if any country, it's like, we've got the answer to everything. No one would believe them because there's too many biases. There's too many blood feuds. There's too many countries that hate each other. You'd have to have something from the outside. It goes into that whole Reagan speech of, um, we, you know, Reagan said, well, if, you know, if there was an outside force, an yeah. alien presence, wouldn't we all unite at that point? It's like, well, yeah, he was absolutely right. Um, the other right, thing. Let me jump on you. Let me just jump in, yeah. everybody, because I want to, uh, before you move to the next one. Yeah. Because I said, you, you've mentioned this ancient peoples before uh, several times in the conversation here. So are they, are they, where are they now? I guess is the question that I have for you. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. I think. Uh, they may have done this. They may be, they may be revealed. Are they, are they out and about? Or are they like something that's gone now or what? what, what, what tell me about this ancient race of people <laughs> that you. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrap my head around. Well, this. no, no, it's okay. Well, think of this: if if there are, if we're not the first people to um, to rent this apartment, there. Think of how much we've accomplished this in the last five hundred years. That that much technology we've done, you know, we've created in the last five hundred years. And then, you know, look at the pyramids themselves. I'll just use the the Egyptian pyramids. Pyramids of Giza is a perfect example. I happen to have the privilege of going out there, standing below them and looking at them, and then having tour guides saying, "Oh yeah, by the way, we built that in thirty years." I'm going with what? <laughs> No, you couldn't. We couldn't build that now in 30 years. I mean, it was ridiculous the amount of yeah. engineering that it took to build those damn things. So the, the question is, what happens to civilizations? I think it's like graduating class. I think it's like school. Let's go back to the school reference, which is I think that every civilization has their time here. And when they are done, the graduating class moves on. And you're saying, well, where do they move? It's like, I don't know. Um, I don't think it's interdimensionally necessarily. It could be subterranean. And that is, you know, why not Why not go underground? It's like, well, that wouldn't be fun. Wouldn't the surface be a lot more entertaining than subterranean? It's like, well, not necessarily. Think of it this way. The, the majority of our population lives between a very narrow band of sea level and one mile up. That's it. Uh, you know, um, altitude sickness kicks in at about a mile and a quarter. So if you wanted to create, a, you know, let's say an underground cavern, I don't know, 10 miles high, 
that's as high as most commercial airlines cap out at. That's more than enough room or 20 miles high. So could there be another world, you know, going into the whole hollow earth theory, which is how I got into flat earth. Could, you know, the hollow earth theory, of course, says that it's a giant cavernous world inside a sphere. But really, right, when, right. You, when you look at it from a flat earth standpoint, you don't need that much room. You just, you know, so do I think it could be an underground civilization? Sure, possibly. Could they be outside the dome? Sure, possibly. Uh, but either way, they're older and more powerful than us. And by that, they've mastered what UFO people will, will call, uh, let's just call it the unified field engine, otherwise known as the UFO engine, which means you don't need cars. Okay, and somehow they got out of the dome, possibly, they possibly got out of the Right, dome. Either, either got out of the dome or created a civilization. But what is, what's interesting is it appears like there's rules involved here. Again, look up the 1561 Nuremberg event, which is, I think there's things, the older civilizations, I don't think are allowed to interact with the, who's ever on the surface. And if you want to steal from Star Trek with the Prime Directive, by all means, do that. Because that's kind of what we're talking about here. The Prime Directive says, don't mess with a civilization when they're growing. And that's what I think happens here. Right. Because, you know, you never see, it's, it's the old argument from science, is why is a spaceship just land in Main Street? It's like, well, because if they did, it would create a lot of havoc. You, you, the single spaceship shows down on Main Street, I don't know, let's say Indiana, just parks themselves down there, you know, goes out, takes it, signs a few autographs, takes a few selfies, and then takes off. I mean, immediately it would change everything. There'd be so many questions and right. so many theological discussions over it that would disrupt most of science. And that's what we're, we're talking about, why it doesn't happen. So I think that once our civil, I think the same thing is going to happen to us. I think we're going to get to a stage where, because I think we've tapped out anyway, honestly. We, Novelty-wise, we've run out of things to, to do. Our, our arts department, our, the creative arts, we, we got nothing left in the tank. We're just rebooting and remaking everything. We have got no, There's nothing new under the sun when it comes to us. And I think when that happens, I think whoever controls this place looks at it and says, all right. Right, you guys are graduated. Done with you. Go and do something else. And there's this big transition, some terraforming, and whoever uh, will say the survivors of our particular civilization move off and get to do other things. And you know, that's how I think. I think it's cyclical, and that's how it works. I think there was somebody before us. So you and say I, survivors like you envision sort of like an apocalyptic. Well, situation. I mean, I liked I like to do the half the glass half full thing. So I kind of hope it wasn't an apocalypse. But come on, look at look at all the remnants of the civilizations that we've seen so far. And I I'm not saying you have to you know just watch Ancient Aliens to do it. But I mean, it seems like a lot of stuff was wrecked. Now, could it have been post civilization terraform? mean that wrecked these things yeah possibly but atlantis isn't here anymore and there's a lot of weird stuff happening in the bermuda triangle so you know yeah i think i think some apocalypse has happened i don't know maybe maybe it's dealer's choice how our civilization ends maybe they give us a chance to go one way or the other and we have to choose do you choose the happy popcorn ending movie or it's a happy ending and people you know get enlightened and ascend or do you go with the tragic award-winning movie where everybody dies? I don't know. I don't know. I, I hope it's not the latter, but, you know, every once in a while, I like a good tragedy, too. <laughs> well, that brings me... You kind of touched on a question I had here uh, that piqued my interest from watching the movie. Is Multiple times in the film, you mentioned that uh, you say, we're winning. You say, flat earth to me, yeah. you're winning. Yeah. So, I guess, what does... You know, what does victory look like to you? Oh, I can tell you exactly what victory looks like to me. Well, okay, the road to victory looks like what I just watched this week, as a matter of fact. There was a wonderful video put out by a non-flat earther. Uh, he was a gamer, as a matter of fact. His name was Asmon Gold. Big in the gaming community. And he was arguing with some people. He's one of those guys that records his games, and then puts his face off in the corner, and then he reads chat simultaneously, because that's what kids do nowadays. And although I think he's, prob he's probably like 30. And he was saying, well, you know, I, you know, he wasn't giving much cre credence to the, the flat earth uh, concept. And he go, and people in the chat room were saying, no, no, flat earth's real, flat earth's real. He goes, really? Let's do a poll right now. And he pulls up, I think it was strawpoll.com, and he does a quick poll, instant poll. He goes, all right, vote right now. Yes, it's flat. No, it's not flat. And within, I think, 20 seconds, he had, he was, you know, gaining on about 3,000 people that were voting. And he was scoring 53 to 47 flat 
which was amazing, you know, considering that demographic. And here's here's what's interesting yeah. about that. And because I, I tell people, I say our biggest flyers, biggest problem is 90 percent of our members are in the closet, meaning, yeah, 53 percent of that group were voting flat because it was totally anonymous, totally anonymous. They were hidden. There was no way anyone could find out how they actually voted. You took those same 3000 people and you put them in a peer group situation where they're, they're looking next to each other, I guarantee less than 20%, probably less than 10% would raise their hands. So that's the road to victory is we're, we're going in behind the scenes and a lot of people don't even know. You know Flat Earthers right now, I guarantee it. But they're not going to talk to you about it, which is why I use the Fight Club reference so many times. Um, total victory, what happens when we hit total victory? Um, I think it's the 100th monkey effect which is we reach a point i'll tell you what the hundredth monkey effect is in a second but it means that more people it's cooler it's more socially acceptable to buy into it than not buy into it meaning the flat earth reaches that tip so you pass the point of no return yeah yeah the point of no return with the tipping point where all the cool kids are into flat earth and you're not into flat earth you're not hip and you're thinking well that's stupid i go well maybe it's a lot more mechanical than that um, the hundredth, hundredth monkey effect, which is fascinating. We didn't come up with the science, you know, because scientists do all sorts of weird stuff. And they were feeding uh, potatoes to monkeys off of these islands off of Japan. And they were dropping the potatoes off in the sand. And the monkeys, some of the monkeys figured out that if you washed the, the, uh, the, the potatoes off in the, in the salt water, it would tasted better than eating sand. And what happened was, here was what got weird. When it hit about, I don't care if people say it's a myth or not. I don't think it's a myth at all. I think it's a complete software update, which is once you got about to about the hundredth monkey, all the monkeys learned it instantly. And here's where it gets weird. So all the monkeys is like, you just drop potatoes. They just grab the potato, go to the water. They wash it off instantly, even if it's their first time with a potato. Where it got interesting was it wasn't just the monkeys on that island. It was all the other islands the, the scientists hadn't even been to yet. They all knew simultaneously. It's like all this, that species of monkey got an update instantly, which goes into this like, you know, how do fish move so fast in a school? How do birds move so fast in a school? I think there's some things behind the scenes which are, are, are mechanical or, or digital in nature. And I thought that was fascinating. I think that's where, you know, what happens with humans? Can that happen with human beings? I think it can. All right. And so, but that's kind of like you talk through the mechanics of it. So what, Take me, I, oh, I mean, what happens? Sort of like what happens? Like, what happens if, if you know, all the UFO lands on the White House? On take me through flat Earth disclosure. Okay. What is? How does this happen? Because my problem, not so much with flat Earth theory, but more with with uh, with the with the example I use, yeah. is that it's hard for me to wrap my mind around the steps in which this thing could actually happen. You're right. You're right. So and I it's, guess, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, break you know, it the down. It's like, hey, aliens are real, and now they're going to start coming here. Yep, yep. Like, no, I'll, 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 I'll break how, it down. How, is, how are they even going to manage that? Yeah. They, can't even, they can't even get my mail on time. <laughs> you're, no, you're absolutely <laughs> so, right. And, how and, are they... How, are, how is this going to happen? How is flat Earth disclosure going to happen? And I wrestled with this because uh, I was thinking that too. I mean, a part of my job is to look at the other side of the chessboard. And it's like, okay, how, what happens? What happens if all of a sudden they try to disclose flat Earth? And the, the problem I had was, is that no, if America, even if America tried to do it with all our, our media might, it's not going to play very well because there's a lot of countries out there that hate us. And we're not talking about the Middle Eastern countries. There's a lot of people that just don't like America's not the good guys necessarily. We, we, we wear the white hats, but it's, it's more of a gray hat than, than anything. So yeah, no, I think most countries hate America yeah. nowadays. So that's why you know, if you're traveling, say you're Canadian, it's much safer. So, but, but when, exactly. it, when it comes to releasing something like this, I don't think it can be done. It's going to sound weird when I say it. I don't think it can be done by our civilization. I think it has to be done by something outside of us. I think it, I think it has to be done by, which is why I think it's a setup. I think it's, I think another civilization has to come in and reveal it. I don't think Trump could come out and read it on national news. not going to make a damn bit of difference. China, same thing. Russia, same thing. UK. We're so fragmented out there. I think it's going to take an outside force to, to make it happen. I think there's going to be some sort of event. And if that, if it sounds as silly as, I don't know, landing a giant golden spaceship somewhere, you know, and somebody comes out, some 10 foot tall blue person and says, Oh yeah, by the way, we helped create this world and it's a dome. 
you know, if they if they come out and say it, it's like, oh, they, they could get away with it. Absolutely. And, and then you, of course, because you have right, to also right. let the governments off the hook. They've been lying for a while. You've got to let NASA off the hook. And when we told right, that's NASA. That's the other part of the sort of the question. Exactly. Yeah. That's the other part of the question yeah. where it's like, um, you know, <laughs> some of these people, some of these people in ufology, they, you know, they're like, string them up. <laughs> You know, get, right. you know, well, let's root out the people that lie to us. It's like, all right, so yeah, what do you do with all the people that, you know? Oh, no, 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 that's, that's just it. You're absolutely right. Because... There's, there's a line, and it's a wonderful line from, from uh, JFK, it, and that is, in a perfect coup d'etat, you've got to make sure that whoever is responsible for the conspiracy is absolutely gets off scot-free. That's the point. And, you know, they, they get off without, without any problems. And, yes, all, all you have to do is have whoever it is, whoever makes the big reveal, they have to come and say, oh, yeah, by the way, we were the ones that told NASA. We told your governments to keep it a secret because you you weren't ready yet. It was for your own good. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. That's all the loophole that you need. And then NASA can walk out. It's like, yep, see, <laughs> not our fault. It's like, yeah, we took $52 billion yeah. a year. But, you know, what's money in, in something like this? And that's how you get off. And, and People would still hate them, dude. Oh, yeah, they'd, <laughs> they'd, hate, they'd them. hate them, but there wouldn't be any, they wouldn't be formal, meaning there wouldn't be any class action lawsuit. Right. They would be, it's like, look, the blue people told, Trials, you know. Yeah. It, so that's, that's, how, that's the only way you can be able to get them off. No government can sit, no, you're absolutely right. No existing government can step forward and make the claim the un could not even step forward and make this claim because immediately there would be a massive class action lawsuit that would be you know too big to fail all over again mostly by the the subcontractors you'd have boeing and general dynamics and lockheed martin and all those guys who make all the parts they'd be like oh we've got some problems here and the lawyers would be lining up you can't let that happen and which is why that's where I think I think we're we're heading in that direction to where the, there is going to be a re big reveal, but it's not going to be us that's doing it. Now, see, I'm very interested in this because I had no idea this was the direction you were going to go in. I'm wondering <laughs> where are you in relation to the rest of the flat Earth community? Are they all? Is this kind of the shared vision of some of them? Earth disclosure. Some of them. Like the... Someone outside of of Earth is going to share the truth? Well, us? you got to remember for a lot of them, and I, I'm not disagreeing with them because it's, again, it's it's six of one, half a dozen the other. A lot of them, on the, remember, 50% of them from the religious side, they're going to say that it's going to be a biblical event that's going to be the big reveal. And for, you know, they're, they're all on the same page where, you know, it's going to be... It's right. going to be so, they, so, so the outside, instead of like an ancient race of people... Yeah. They just swap that with like Jesus. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's going to be something out of revel. Something from Revelation is going to maybe why they call it Revelation. You know that that's going to kick in and, and that's going to take it over. The the secular side, they're you know they're still working. A lot of people haven't even thought that far. To be honest, they're they're still is like oh we we've got to fit. We'll they their answer is we will try to reveal it. And I'm going, okay, well, you know, you, you got to think a little bigger than that in that we may be revealing it because we're being allowed to reveal it. And if that's the case, I think we're the precursor for something that's, that's much, much bigger. And again, I, I think it's, I think it's, we, we've been kind of hinting and other conspiracy groups have been think, talking about Project Bluebeam and some sort of celestial event. Remember, not too long ago, we were talking about the whole Nibiru thing. And now it's like, if I even hear yeah. someone say, well, no, Bureau could still happen. I was going, no, if you see any sort of thing in the sky, it's going to be artificial or it's going to be done by the system itself. It's going to be done by whoever's, whoever's controlling this place. But that's, that's where I think we're headed. Yeah. I'm old enough to remember, uh, the end of the Mayan calendar. So, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was kind of broke me, Mark. I don't think I'll ever, I don't think I'll ever truly, not that I actually believed anything would happen, but at that point I was like. I don't think I'll ever believe again that anything. <laughs> yeah, it was very. You're <laughs> absolutely right. Back, I was. You know, I was so physical, disappointed. At that point, I would kind of realize it's like, wait a minute, they just build this shit up and nothing ever happens. Yeah. Oh well, hell, I, I live in Seattle, and as you know, Seattle. Well, or maybe you don't know, Seattle was supposed to be destroyed uh, three days ago, and uh, it wasn't. There was a lot of. Yeah, I saw that ridiculous conspiracy. Yeah, theory. they were. They were. You know, they were. They were preaching it pretty hard, and. It, you know, three, you know, even though, and even though I didn't believe it, I, I was still, people were like, oh, are you going to go down, you know, watch the Seahawks game? I'm going, hell no, I'm not going to the, to the Seahawks game. 
Like, not if they, you know, all the predictive yeah. people are saying, you know, oh, this, it may happen at the Seahawks game. It's like, it'd be silly to go. Uh, but, you know, you're, when your life's on the line, you, you tend to think about it a little harder. How are the Seahawks doing this year? Are they any good? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I think, you know, the 49ers and the Patriots are still favored, but we'll see. You know, it's all theater. You know, even pro professional sports when it comes to football and basketball, it can be manipulated so easy. You know, producers have figured out they, they give the people what they want. Um, we even had a reality television show approach us recently. And the more I look at reality television shows, it's like the more I because I've spent enough time with field producers over the last four or five years. That's like there's nothing real about it. <laughs> Seriously, other than yeah. the show Cops. <laughs> I think ev nothing, nothing is real outside of that. Like, r real quick example, I don't want to go off in the weeds too much. Um, you remember the show The Osbournes? Remember the show Osbournes? Yeah, of course. Okay, uh, so I, I remember there was only two two children. Ozzy Osbourne only had two children in that show, you know, the son and the daughter. No, there are three children. The, nice. the older daughter refused to sign the freaking waivers, and so she said, I don't want to do with the show. She was in the house the entire time. And they had to shoot around her all the time. And every time they even mentioned her, they had to cut that part out. And I, I thought, how interesting. She, oh, wow. she could go into a bar and say, oh, yeah, I'm an Osborne girl. And be like, what are you talking about? I watched that show for all the seasons. It's like, you weren't in it. It's like, yeah, I know. It's because I didn't sign the waivers. It's like, oh, wow. Too bad. <laughs> wow, that's pretty wild. I didn't know that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's. I, I'll have to look that up. Yeah, per perceptions. We believe uh, what is presented to us. What's that? We, pre we believe what is presented to us. You know, the television show said that Ozzy Osbourne had two children in that show. Nope, he had three. But that's what television showed us, too. It's like, yep. So interesting. I'll, I'll have to explore this sort of question, I think, more when I get to Dallas and I can talk to the people. Because I think the idea of, like, how this resolves itself. Oh, you'll you'll get a bunch other, of you'll other folks in the community. Have to say. Oh yeah, you'll get a bunch of different answers because a lot of them want to, want to take it into their own hands, you know, and which is why they're doing street activism, why they're doing conferences, why they're doing meetups because they you know they're they're pushing it out there. But I think they can only go so far. I think for this thing to actually burst into flames, I think we're going to need help, and we're going to need help from an outside source that is bigger than us to do it. Now they, they right. that's right. It's that's very similar. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of similarities here with the UFO thing. Yeah, so it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, in that sense, my, at least as far as you can see this looking. Yeah, it might might be related too. By the way, I mean uh, seriously, all you'd need is a is a big UFO to to do it, you know, and and some you know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, we kind of danced around that a little bit, yeah. but yeah, it stands to reason that like if there is a dome over this flat Earth, it's like who made the dome? It's like right. well. I'll, <laughs> for some people, the obvious answer is God, and for other people, the obvious answer is aliens. Right. 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 Like, and, and as you said before, it's like, really, is it a matter? Of, like, at that point, it's like a matter of semantics. Yeah, yeah, it really like is. I mean, if a, other intelligence. if a giant golden spaceship literally landed in France right now and 10 foot tall blue people showed up, churches would be formed immediately. Immediately they would be formed. It's like, we should worship the blue people. I mean, this is a, they make up names, right. and then there'd be factions of the Blue People churches that would go, you know, go against each other. Oh, my God. It'd be all a big mess. Yeah. Which is why you probably now, shouldn't tell even... Me, let's pivot a little bit. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, let's pivot now to the movie. Okay. Because I saw the movie... I don't want to pester you with like a million questions in a sense about the movie because it's not your movie. Right. Um, you're the star of the movie, but like you didn't make it. Nope. So I can't be like, hey, why did you do this, that, and the other thing? You don't have it. You don't answer for the movie. Right. Um, so I guess first of all, how <laughs> how did you wind up in this movie, and did you realize? Uh, like that you were essentially going to be portrayed essentially as the star of the movie. I mean, the movie begins and ends with you. I kind, I kind of got a, I, a sense of it when, because I was the first one that was approached. Um, they kept filming you over and over again. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I was with them off and on for seven months. Uh, but yeah, I was the first one they approached. It was a small production team out of Los Angeles who, who called me and, and flew up to Seattle and they said, Hey, we'd like to talk to you about this. And, the director met with me and we were having pizza. I think we were maybe talking like 30 minutes. It's like, you know what? Let's break the camera out. Just start shooting a few things to see, you know, and 
they took that footage back with him to LA and then he's like, you know what? Let's start talking to more people. Who, who can we talk to him? You know, they had me track down Patricia and Bob and Jaron and Chris Pontius and those guys. And when did I, did I know I was going to be the main focal point? I did, but nobody thought it was going to do anything, including the producers themselves, because what it comes, you never, you never know what's going to resonate with people, with the general public. And so, for example, we, we debuted at the Toronto Film Festival and you, people don't understand how many films get made on an, on an average year. We're not talking about straight to DVD stuff. We're talking about films that you never see the light of day. And so 3,000 films, oh, yeah, yeah. 3, films were submitted to Toronto. Out of those, they picked 100, which they showed during the festival. And out of those, maybe you'd, if you were really, really good, you cracked the top 10. And we did every time. And out of those, maybe just a handful get picked to get purchased by a distributor. Otherwise, you're just in a film festival. And they, none of the producers right. had any faith at all. They're, they're like, no, no, we, we probably won't get into film festivals. And we got into every one of them as far as I know. And they said, well, it's never going to, you know, even if we get bought out at all, it'll take a year and a half, two years. And it was picked up almost immediately by iTunes and YouTube and Amazon. And then finally, a few months later, Netflix got a hold of it. And that's when that's when it took off. Is when because apparently, if you're under the age of thirty, you have Netflix. That's just it's the best bang for your buck if you're if you're you know cheap for media. And then it, it started trending, and it started trending even harder and harder to where it was. Yeah, it was it was doing really really well. And so, yeah, that's when I started getting them emails it's like, oh, oh, you're the star of the movie. It's like, oh, wow. And yeah, I'm IMDb and the whole nine yards. But I didn't I, I, I knew I was the, I was a big part of the movie, but I didn't know that the movie was going to do anything. So I didn't care. Uh, and but I, right. I was flattered. It was it, well, that's good. Then You didn't really alter your no behavior, so to speak. No, 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 no. I was uh, I, I didn't. I mean, seriously, I mean, and even after it came out, look, you know, for documentaries, you don't get paid to, to do the documentary, but it did open up doors to do other things. I mean, I, I got it got me more interviews. Um, in fact, a lot of my interviews started getting younger and younger. Tomorrow morning, I'm doing a, another high school out of New York. It's amazing how many universities and, and high schools I've done. I've done junior high, junior high schools. I've done those, um, mostly because because there was a 12 year old kid who, who asked me a question in the movie, and I didn't yell at him. I was actually applauding him. It's like good for you, you know, that you're showing up, skipping school, and 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 doing this conference. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was a wonderful experience. Would I have changed a few things? Yep, I probably would have changed a, a few things. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of. Uh... I don't have like specific moments or anything like that to embarrass you, but it's like I, I'm, I'm just like I, if I if this if, if the roles were reversed, I guess you could say if I got if they made a movie about me, I I'm just so self conscious about shit. I probably would cringe like left and right. It's like oh why did I say that? Like why did I? So it was a kind of like a maddening experience too. Well, it for me it wasn't a um I I didn't I I wasn't too worried about me because I treat everything like it's recorded anyway. Um, so, so, and I knew what they were going for with most producers, you just try to narrate as, as much as humanly possible and, and hopefully they can get a few sound bites out. Um, the only things that I was really worried about was that they didn't like at towards the end, the, the producers did not like us. Um, and it didn't, it's not that they didn't like the people I got along with them just fine. You know, I had dinner with them and, and hung out with them it was, it was fine, but they didn't like the topic. And what really changed was when they went to the conference and they saw that there were kids at the conference. And they were really, so you know, the, the old saying, it's all fun and games until the kids are involved. And that's what happened. They, yeah, yeah. they, they, at that point, they wanted to turn the movie in a certain way to make their stance absolutely clear, which was they did not believe in Flat Earth in, in any capacity. And, but the thing was the movie, right. the movie was already shot and they didn't have enough money to shoot it again. So they decided that they were going to, um, just do it in editing. So that's when they went after Jaron at the end and Bob from Globusters and, and took a couple shots at me. But it initially was supposed to be just a neutral human interest piece. Uh, but inadvertently, while yeah. while they were taking the shots at us, they were making us more pal more palatable to the uh, the general public. 
the general public felt safe watching this movie because it wasn't 100% pure, uncut, flat earth. Every once in a while, you'd see a scientist or an astronaut or a psychologist. And, yeah. and, the, and I, was, I sat in these audiences. I went to some of these film festivals and, and be like, oh, God, thank God. Okay, not enough flat earth. Okay, the psychologist is saying something. I have no idea what he's saying, but he's making me feel good. Okay, it's flat earth. I don't think I can take it. And it would be this big roller coaster. But right. by the time they got to the end, the, the audience was, was in rough shape, but they didn't leave. They had a lot of questions, and that's where you know we we it became our the biggest Trojan horse ever for us. There were so many people that asked asked questions because of that movie. So I have no no regrets. So are you on good terms with the producers then, or you, or is it kind of contentious? Well, they, like the they, you said, they just stopped liking the the subject. So it's like, so do they still like you? <laughs> well, the director or, or or you or, you know are you all because like I guess what was the reaction? I mean, answer that question, but sort of tie it into the whole idea of like, what was the, because it doesn't make you guys look very good, you know, overall. Like, it, it's, and no, no and that's okay. It makes that, all you guys really likable. I liked all, all the people in the movie, but it doesn't, it doesn't make the, a very good case for the flat. No, no, it, it doesn't. But that's, so, I mean, but that's okay because you're not going to convince somebody in a hundred minutes. And I, and I knew this. I, 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 it was really strange because I predicted after I saw it the first time, I saw it in a hotel in, in Toronto before I saw it on the big screen and I said, yeah, flat earthers are going to hate it, but the general population is going to have questions. And what I didn't realize was that it, once it got into their head, because they were engaged, it's something about some, I, I shouldn't use the term brainwashing, but if you can engage a target for even 40 minutes, it's going to stick in their head for a while because they're going to try to resolve it. And right. so, no, no, you're absolutely right. The audience coming out is like, no, I'm not a flat earther, but I got questions. And the more questions they had, the worse it got to where by the time, you know, and, and so I, I know this because my email load literally after it came out on Netflix and I was already getting a lot of emails, my email load doubled once Netflix came out and it was all the same sort of yeah. questions just from different people. And they all started, it's like, saw your movie. Hey, I saw you're in this movie. Hey, I saw behind the curve and I have questions. And the questions always were, Hey, I don't believe in flat earth, but tell me about this or how does this work? And it's right. like, okay. Right. And I would, you know, do as best I can, or I'd send them links or, or whatever I could. And it was amazing how many people, again, were exposed to it. And that just, again, it was a Trojan horse, which was, yeah, fine. There was an astronaut. Fine. Neil deGrasse Tyson was, was saying a few things. Fine. There was a psychologist saying that, you know, we were having problems. And of course, the Dunning-Kruger effect, which I think is hilarious. Uh, but the But they had... Curiosity. Human beings are insatiable when it comes to curiosity. And so they, l let me end it with this, which is the first 20 minutes of that movie, I was sitting next to people and nobody believed it was even real. Meaning they thought it was a fake movie, like a piece of docufiction. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> they, they, you could hear them whispering. It's like, wait a minute there's something really big and scary in the internet and I know nothing about it. <laughs> and you know, some, some weird corner of the internet that, that you didn't even know existed. And you, and, and, right, and, right. and they was like, and then they were just fascinated. It's like, why do people believe in this? How, how is this happening? In fact, uh, a real quick story was, um, right, exactly, yeah. there was an editor that we showed it to down in Los Angeles. Um, uh, the editor of our, our movie showed it to this editor down there. And he said, he said, look, I'm going to show you something with no context. Just watch it. Tell me what you think. And when he was done watching it, he looks at me, he goes, man, he goes, what sort of budget did you have for this movie? He goes, what are you talking about? He goes, where did you get all those actors? They played it so straight. Like they actually believed in flattered. <laughs> and, and he had, and it was the best part was going, no man, that was real. They were all real people. And the guys, you know, straight out of, you know, eye, pupils dilating. It's like, it's like, what do you mean? It was real. Like that Raleigh conference that happened. He goes, dude, I was there. And it's like, what? How is this, you know, and, and, and I saw this with massive yeah. audiences where there, there's a lot of people when they walked out of that movie were just like shell shocked. They're like, what is this? You know, cause it's like, it's 20. Yeah. It, yeah. It's yeah. People don't. I've tried to explain to people how big this is. Oh yeah, it's it's monstrous. Um, yeah. That's why I'm looking forward to getting down there in Dallas and really getting into the thick of it and seeing, you know, what this 
what this is like on the ground level. Oh yeah, you'll um, you'll be amazed. It's it's such a positive thing. Remember remember who you're saying that was like, well, you don't seem angry at all when you're answering you're at, answering those questions. It's like no, and in fact, flat earthers when they get together, it's like a turbine engine. They just there's this infectious. They just get more excited and more excited because a lot of them it's their first chance to actually be in a completely safe environment where you know friends and families and coworkers aren't just beating on them so they're just they, they, they're just right, so right. they're so excited you'll see it it's it's going to be amazing it should be interesting i'm looking forward to it cool. um all right so the movie let me see what else i had to here in the movie uh you mentioned something, but I lost my train of thought. Sorry, uh, I do that. As far as the movie went, so, oh, so okay, so it's kind of you didn't really answer the question though, what? per se, what? in the sense that like, so are you are you still cool with these people that made the movie? Oh, 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 I'm I'm like, cool with. Hey, we made this movie and. Oh well, okay. So the three people that I was in main contact with, the director, um, Daniel Clark. Um, the, I, I, I never really talked to him much anyway. I mean, we talked of, you know, of course during the whole showing, but he's really a quiet guy in, to begin with. So I didn't expect much from him. Uh, well, the lead producer, Caroline, uh, she, she and I still, you know, email back and forth and I love taking digs at her anyway. It's kind of adversarial in a way. Cause I know she absolutely doesn't believe in any conspiracy whatsoever. She believes that everything on right. the news is absolutely as advertised. She believes it's on in, the level. Yeah, she believes it. it's like it's from God's God's uh, lips to Fox News. You know, absolutely true. And oh, Jesus. yeah, I know, right? So, but the That's same. Terrifying. So I will send her things like, "Oh yeah, by the way, I got to do a conference in Amsterdam. Oh yeah, I got to do a conference here. Hey, I got to do a conference here. You know, oh, I just did a commercial in Melbourne." You know, and she just blows her mind because she's like, she's like, what? How is this happening? But she thinks it's really, really cool because she's a producer at heart. And she realizes that anything that happens yeah. with us will, of course, I mean, she can hang her hat on this movie at this point because it's a, she's 25, I think now. So she's, you know, it's like. No, it's a fantastic movie. I thought it was great. I was afraid to say how much I liked it at first because I didn't know if. Uh... <laughs> uh, well, no, no. I like, mean, it, hey, they made me look like a dope sometimes. It, it's, it's an, it's an you know. interesting movie. I mean, it, and it, and the, I've heard the same thing. There's a lot of people that really, really enjoyed it, and so I'm, I'm happy for her. Um, do we talk a lot? No. Um, mostly because we have too many differences. Um, the like the director. Right, so it's not contentious. We don't need. No, it. no, it's it's not contentious. I don't hate so them. It's not contentious. No, no, but the, the director at the same time. Here, uh, this is a perfect example. The director, literally in an interview just a few months ago, is still convinced that I don't believe it. That I am absolutely just trying to uh, some uh, like doing a long con here. He he cannot believe he's in such right. denial. He ca he cannot get his head around that I believe it. Um, Nick. Same sort of thing, but then again, he and I disagree on on what exactly artificial intelligence is. And Caroline, eh, she believes that everything is true. It's like you know, why would anyone lie? So that's fine. I mean, yeah. you know, there's a lot of people in our community that start out just that way. So, but no, I don't hate any of them. And uh, I mean, they had dinner up here with me, uh, with my family, and and. So what are the other? So you said the flat earthers hate it, though. So what did they? What is the community? Oh, the community. They like, oh, no, no, they, they won't be able to go to. Let's silly. let's put it this way: though, the anyone that created that movie will not be able to show up at the conference. <laughs> no, they they will. In fact, right. that 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 particular movie inspired flat earthers to make their own documentaries. We'll see how many of them actually see the light of day. But yeah, they were. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were not. The reason not why this movie not. did as well as it did is because it showed both sides. It was safe. It was something that you could show to anybody and it wouldn't seem like flat earth propaganda. And I know this because one of the big questions that always came up in the film festivals, literally like the first question was when, when the director went up on stages, are you a flat earther? Because had he said yes, the whole tone would have changed. And he enthusiastically said, absolutely not. We are not. And he, was, he wasn't lying. Nobody in the production of this movie uh, from the production side was a flat earther. And that helped us. I think so. Like I said, I thought it was a fantastic movie. Okay. Um, now, we talked, this is kind of like, this is a tough question, Mark, and I apologize, but I, I need right. to ask it because uh, I found it really interesting okay. as I got deeper into this uh, field over the last few months. Now, Patricia is a big part of the movie. Yes. And from what I understand, well, we talk, I guess, the, I, guess the, I, I want to preface the question in a sense because we talk a lot about, you and I have talked a lot about this, the positivity of this of this movement 
Um, but this this story here of Patricia Steer yes. is, is 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 worrisome to me because because uh, you know she was in the movie and then apparently I've, I'm trying to ingratiate myself not necessarily like become a part of this community but I'm trying to learn the ins and outs and the people you know I can tell you who is who in ufology I can tell you who is who in cryptozoology I know all the folks in the ghost field. You know, I know all the people in the conspiracy field. I don't know the people in the flat earth world, and that's why I'm coming to Dallas, essentially. <laughs> you know, I put my fucking money where my mouth is. Um, so I'm coming to Dallas to, to meet these people, but I'm concerned. It's worrisome. I'm troubled by what seems to have happened to her because she was, like, drummed out of of the flat earth world. From what I understand, but again, I'm just kind of oh no 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 it's I'm okay like a blind it's okay man and an orgy all right all right I'm just feeling my way through this uh, so what what happened with Patricia okay because well, she vanished essentially for folks who don't know what I'm talking she about did she did vanish was in the movie she was essentially your co-star for lack of a better term yeah. and I guess it, like sometime at the beginning of the summer she just pulled out of everything and and dropped off the internet yep so what what is okay the, story? the the short version is this is that. When it comes to the internet, if you are trying to put, if you're going to put yourself out there and you're going to literally bear your soul and you're going to make your information public, you have got to put a big suit of armor on around your ego because the trolls are, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the trolls are everywhere and they're horrible. Not to quote uh, the very talented uh, young blonde girl, but haters going to hate, 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 hate. And they will. I mean, I have seen. I, you might. You could make a video about kittens playing in an orphanage, and I think within the first hundred hits, you'd have somebody come in there and say, "This is effing gay. Thumbs down. Unsubbed. I hate you and God and everybody else." Literally, that. that I, yeah. I'm not kidding. That happens all the time. And the problem was, is Patricia read every single comment that was ever posted on her videos. And I was watching her do this when she only oh had... Oh, God, that's bad for you. Oh, my God. I Exactly. I told her, I go, look, you've got 20 videos. What happens when you hit 50? What happens when you hit 100? Are you still... If you if you don't stop reading these comments, because it doesn't matter. if You, you, know, you know how it goes. If you have 10 wonderful comments, you're great. You're wonderful. Right. You give me so much hope. And then, you suck. You should die. That's all you're going to focus on. You don't care. You don't care about the other comments. Right, exactly. And I said, if you keep doing this, you're going to snap. And she, she, I said, are you going to keep reading? She goes, I have to keep reading. I'm going, all right, it's your funeral. And eventually when she got, I think over 200, uh, it, she had a particularly bad week where the trolls were just, I mean, it, were, it wasn't, they were just posting in comments. They were making videos about her calling her ugly and a man and fat. Right, and right. I mean, this is, yeah, I guess, I guess partially. I think, and I don't want to interrupt this no, no, go ahead, too much, go ahead. but I think what people need to understand, in a sense, uh, as a side sort of line to this whole conversation, is that, like, from what I can gather, this this flat Earth thing is it exists predominantly, like, in the universe of YouTube. Most right? most I mean, of it is, is like yes. Where the conversations are had. Yeah. So. That, that, that's kind of the weird part to me where it's like people – look at dude. People have written me shitty things in emails and tweets and on Facebook and stuff and said bad things. About, but when people <laughs> – when there's like movies being made of you, like that's kind of – you know, that's that's pretty overwhelming. I can see why it would be for her. It, it can be, but in her case, she – Again, she had a particularly bad week. Um, her ex-boyfriend from London was a, a really terrible guy, um, and he was saying bad things about her. She was just getting compounded with a, a, just too much. It was overwhelming for her as far as the trolls. And yes, the, right, move, right. the movie amplified it. Absolutely. She was getting uh, a lot more. I mean, you got to remember, she was a triple threat. So when it came to, you want to you find an easy troll target? Okay, you're a woman, you're very attractive, and you're Jewish. <laughs> You're in so much trouble for these things, and she didn't even have a last name that was overtly Jewish, and she was still gonna was still catching crap, and she just that. And so what happened was there was a um, uh, a series of videos that were made during the week, and she she called me and she goes, look, I want to shut it all down, and I I threw some some quick talking on my part. I said, look, 
just turn off likes and dislikes turn off the comments leave the channel you're fine you'll be fine you know just just take you know she she didn't want to do it she didn't want to keep dealing with the trolls and the trolls smelled blood in the water and so they did a wellness check on her house now granted it wasn't like a swatting it was just a wellness check where the cops show up at your door you know, Jesus. just asking if you're okay, but the, still, dude. But they did this it within. The, this is the part that terrifies me. <laughs> yeah, Mark, this is like the part that terrifies me in a sense about even, and and like you should, you know, you should you, know, I, I, you should fucking speak out about this in a sense where it's like this is the kind of thing that makes me concerned about even dipping my toe into this community because it's like that shit doesn't happen in UFO world. Well, and, and, no, but it but it you know, doesn't. Bigfoot it, people aren't. Bigfoot people aren't like. <laughs> are attacking like it, i mean this goes beyond the pale of oh no i agree i agree what's acceptable. i agree now it does now the whole swatting thing which i i hate and load that's mostly a gamer community thing the wellness check because it was because what Correct. one one particular troll figured you know what this will push her over the edge and he was absolutely right because the second she was nice she's like smiled for the cops they didn't come in she's like no i'm fine and she shut the door and she said screw this <laughs> went to her computer and shut it all down yeah. And, and I, and honestly, I, blame her. I didn't blame her. Uh, you know, I, I understood and I know that, you know, she, she perception is a big thing for her. She, social media is a very big thing and it has helped her and it has hurt her. Uh, do I think she could come back, uh, you know, eventually? Sure. Why not? Now did she renounced flat earth. No, it was just that the trolls were, I mean, you know, the trolls are awful. They're really, really terrible. There's trolls in everything, but in her case, they, they found a button they thought they could push. They got lucky and it worked. So, uh, you know, I, I hope she comes back one day and I, you know, cause she, I think she has a lot to offer the community. I think she's done some wonderful stuff in the past. And again, she just shut down her channel, all the mirrors, including everything that was ever on my channel and all the other stuff. It's still out there. Everything on the internet sticks. So, and honestly, right. look, the documentary, uh, you can't undo that. So she's forever immortalized in that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So wh wh whatever. No, I thought she was really cool. I was kind of heart. I mean, I was kind of heartbroken in a sense. I was like, when I booked my trip to the conference, yeah. uh, was before I learned that she had dropped out and everything, and I'd seen the movie, and I'm like, oh, cool, I'll get to meet Mark Sargent and, and Patricia and the people from the movie. And then I like looked at, and I'm like, oh, she's not listed on the thing. I wonder what happened. I looked into it, and I'm like, oh no, this is like. No, you never know. You, know, you never know. By the way, I, I, I have no rumor. I have no way of knowing this. And what? But it's like, look, she lives in Texas. She lives in Houston. So she could very easily. Oh Jesus, she, Mark! You're gonna get you're gonna get Robbie mad at you if you start teasing things no, that aren't. No, <laughs> that no, 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 not at all, not at all. No, I mean, no. I'm just saying that it would be easy for her to show up. I'm just saying if she's ever listening to this. Because people are, of course, have talked. I'm not the first person to bring this up. It's like, look, now that she's not a speaker at the conference, she could come up and just mill around and say hi and stuff, and the and the community would still love her for it because there's no trolls there. She's loved in the, it's still loved in the community. So, uh, and I and I miss her. We haven't really talked since the the blackout because I wanted to give her as as much space as I possibly could. And, uh, yeah. you know, if I, I have, I know people and I, I know the inside conversations that we had and I know, I know she wants bigger things and I know she wants better things. And I know that she had to slog through the, you know, the, 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 the awfulness that can be YouTube sometimes. And, and I tell people, yeah. I'll tell you, it's like, look, the only reason I can sleep at night is because I don't read 90% of the comments that are in YouTube. Because it's just horrible. It's like, look, I, I'd be in a fetal position in a, on a regular basis. My ego would be destroyed. In fact, I while I was talking to you, I literally got an email that said, here, I'll, I'll read it for you real quick. You ready? I just got to see it. And I don't get many troll yeah. emails. This person actually, this goes beyond. I rarely get troll emails because they don't want to spoof it. Just checking, but has anyone ever told you that you are just a lonely, sad old man who is so in love with getting the smallest bit of attention that you would literally believe anything. And, you know, it goes on about Patricia and blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, my God. It's like, yep. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, no one gives a F about your theory. That's why no scientist is disproving you because they have better things to do. <laughs> yep. He doesn't doesn't sign it, of course. <laughs> but whatever. That's, yeah. that's depressing. Yeah. yeah, no. Yeah, well... Anyway, it, it, but it's, it's don't yeah, don't well, worry, don't and don't and don't go ahead, finish the Patricia part, and I'll kind of yeah, yeah. And don't by the way, don't don't, like, don't feel too bad for imagine. Patricia. Patricia has a has a you know really nice life. She doesn't have to work. She's got a bunch of money, 
uh, and uh, she never got married, never had kids, and so she's she's fine. She's living in Houston, going to boutique shops. She's got those cats. Uh, yeah, yeah those sitting cats. with her cats. I mean, she's genuinely a very happy person. So that's good. Well, I hope she's I hope she's doing all right. I was sad to hear. Nah, nah, don't, don't worry, don't down. worry about Patricia. Pretty, pretty girls like that. They, she's very classy, very elegant. Uh, I've seen her survive worse, so she'll be okay. That's good. That's good. Shit! Now I lost. <laughs> now I lost my train of thought on what I was going to ask you before I let you finish the uh, the thought. So let me Sorry. jump to. Uh, we talked about how this is all wrapped up in YouTube. Now, have you? This is sort of an interesting question. Maybe you haven't noticed this, but you seem to be a student in a sense of the conspiracy game. What? You can hang out a little longer after the lady cuts us off. She, they keep recording, so can you do like an extra 15 minutes after the show, after the uh, live thing's over? Because you cost us that extra bit at the beginning. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. All right, cool. <laughs> you cost us like you... <laughs> like you stole those fifteen minutes from me, Mark. No, no, no. no. I, I'm, I absolutely, totally, totally. Let's, let's go wherever you need. I've never done anything like that. That was, that was a wild ride. So the folks who are listening live, download the MP3, or uh, you know, I don't know how I'm gonna deal with the stitching together of this episode. So it may be off blog talk by the end of the night, and in my on my hard drive to be fixed. Okay. But we'll see, whatever. But we're gonna keep going here with Mark. Okay. Um, have you noticed uh, similarities between the Flat Earth community and the Q and on uh, movement? Because I have. Um, some, sure. I mean, we well, we listen to the same sort of news feeds, that's for sure. Uh, and there's a lot of Flat Earthers that still hang on very tightly to some of their favorite conspiracies. Why wouldn't they? You know, if you've been into certain conspiracies and then you finally got into Flat Earth, let's say after being into 9-11 for 10 years, uh, you know, 9-11 is still going to have a special place in your heart. So, yeah, when it comes to QAnon and, and all, all the stuff around it, yeah, there are some similarities, sure. Yeah, because I see a lot of the memes. There's a, there's a sense of artistry yeah. in the two communities that I think... It's really interesting, you know, there's like, both communities are really passionate about what they're doing and they sort of have turned to this interesting sort of, uh, like I said, artistry in the YouTube stuff too, you know, yeah. it's like, they both seem to exist in a way on YouTube. Now, did you, from what I understand, I don't want to, I don't know enough about this to really poke the bear, but I should ask about it because there was some, I didn't see the movie, but I guess there was some controversy with the... Speaking of YouTube, with the YouTube guy that made the movie, uh, Logan Paul. <laughs> um, yeah. Do, yeah, what's the story with all that? Okay. I didn't watch the movie. Should I? No, 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 that's fine. No, I'm probably Logan, asking a terribly biased Lo source. Should I? Should I watch the movie before I come to Dallas? Or, no, 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 there's no, there's no point. It was, in fact, if you can make it through ten minutes, it'd be a miracle. Um, Logan Paul, what he did was he bought tickets to the conference, and in Denver. And he came under the premise that he was flat curious and one of his best, his best friend was actually a bona fide flat earther. And his whole crew was, 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 um, going to come and they were also interested. And he sold this idea to the conference promoter and the promoter, Rob, well, Robbie Davidson, he bid on it absolutely hard. It's like, it's like, what, six million, six million subs. And he might be into flat earth. <laughs> I'm bringing him in. And, but the thing was, Logan made him keep. Uh, hey, look, at I respect Robbie. I have a lot of respect for Robbie if that's his attitude. He's a business. Oh, yeah. Guy. yeah I mean, I, hey, but he would have said the same thing for other people. PewDiePie would have done the same thing or, or Shane Dawson. Any of those big hardcore YouTube players, he absolutely would have done the same thing. The problem was is that Logan made him keep it a secret from everyone. He said, you tell no one and I will. And, and the thing was, he said, oh, well, I'll do promos. I'll show up at this. I'll show up at that. And then Logan started breaking promises up until the event. And we still didn't know. We literally had no. And, and Robbie was letting us speculate it and was fueling, fueling VIP tickets. And the hype was creating more hype. And it was like, by the time we were done, we thought it was Will Smith. Honest to God, thought it was Will Smith. And... Then, um, because oh, what he was saying, like some big celebrity was going to be there. Or something? Oh, yeah, the, yeah, he said it was going to be a big celebrity who was going to be there. 
and and he was saying, <laughs> ah, and the person okay. was a musician and an actor, and it's like, uh, <laughs> wait, Logan, Logan, yeah, Paul, yeah, I didn't know he did those things. Exactly, just, exactly. Oh. It was like, and and he, we just we just fueled off of this. It's like, okay, who is it? And then what happened was, we didn't find out until the night before the conference, and when I found out. I had a different reaction for other people because I was one of the few people that actually knew who he was. I'd done research. I do internet research all the time and I knew about his brother, Jake. And through Jake, I knew about Logan and Logan and the whole suicide forest issue that he had a couple of years back. And, and I said, this kid's a freaking pariah. I go, all he is is a troll. He's terrible. He's awful. We shouldn't have anywhere near us. And, and Robbie was going to give him stage time to boot. And just before my, my set, and I said, um, I'm leaving. So uh, I, I said, if it's actually Logan, uh, I said, I said, I'm leaving. So um, that was it. I just got on a plane and I got out of there. And um, wow. and then Robbie doubled down and he said, no, no, he's legit. He's going to make a documentary about us. And Robbie was in it. And it took Logan three months to edit it. Well, Logan's hired an outside team. And then it was finally released, you know, this year. And it was awful. <laughs> it was so it was it was the one of the worst yeah. worst hit pieces, probably the worst hit single hit piece we'd ever had. And uh, and and Robbie would you know and and of course I was I was vindicated because I was the only one that left. And and what I was basically trying to tell people was, and I I I'd done everything I could. I said I, I yelled and I said I said, but the problem was nobody knew who he was. So even though I was saying, look, he's one of the worst internet trolls out there, it was resonating wasn't resonating with anybody because they're like, look, we've never heard of the guy. Because we, the the Flyers community is older. Logan Paul's demographic is eighth grade boys mostly. You know, there's, it's a younger crowd. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. The whole YouTube, the whole YouTube world. Is uh, yeah, yeah. So completely foreign to me. So we didn't uh, know. None of our flat earthers are, are generally much older. So we we didn't know who he was except for me. And so that's why. And so Logan, I will say this: if you want a silver lining, there is that now nobody gets a free pass. So if Conan O'Brien decided to come into the conference, we wouldn't give him carte blanche. We would we wouldn't give him access to everything because we couldn't trust him. It's like in fact if any comedian shows up and try and, and says, "Oh yeah, I don't want to talk about flatter." It's like, "No. No, 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 no. You get to you get to maybe shoot it from the lobby, but you're definitely not getting all access." And uh, so that was it. So Logan, yeah, I hate him. He should be smothered in his sleep. And uh, I, I, wow. oh no, yeah, the kids, the kids. Seriously, there are few people I can actually say the world would be a slightly better place if he was gone. The Paul brothers, right up there towards the top of the list. I think they're terrible examples of Americans, and I think they're even worse examples of of human beings and and men. There's just there's bad examples all around. Pick a category. They 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 fall into the bad side. Jesus. Of it. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I'm mincing wow. words. All right. Yeah. So, but yeah, feel free. You'll understand. You watch the, I mean, it was an, it was only an hour long and it is by the, by, let's put it this way. By the time you get to the seven minute. Yeah, I may try and watch it this weekend. Oh yeah, so try it. An idea try of what it. I'm in for at the, uh, Oh yeah. And you can, event. you can bring up, uh, yeah. you can bring up his name in the lobby with, to people and people just roll their eyes and be like, uh, and eventually though my name will come up. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, Mark was right. <laughs> Cause it's like, I was the only one to, to bug out. I was the only one that said, yeah, I can't. I can't do this. I, I've got, I've got basically the, the, the bigger reason was I wanted to make sure that I was an insurance policy because if I didn't leave, the headline would literally read Logan Paul punks all, the, all of flat earth. And the, I was the safety valve. It's like, well, I'm, if I have to be the martyr, I'm happy to do it. So anyway, well, it sounds like Robbie wasn't like pissed at you if you're back. Is no, you know, no, 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 I don't know what goes on behind the scenes. No, again, Rob, Robbie, Robbie's a producer and he took the risk and he was dazzled by the numbers. I mean, anyone comes in, honestly, anyone with over a million subs could have probably done the same thing. And uh, there were big, people bigger than Logan, big, people smaller than Logan. But in, in this case, uh, he was high profile enough that, yeah, maybe. And he, Logan did generate some headlines and that did help us. The problem was, is that Logan came in lazy. He didn't even bother to do his homework. So when we were, we, people, yeah. people were asking him questions and his best friend who supposedly was a hardcore flat earther, they knew nothing about anything. It was like, they just got on a plane. So yeah, let's go punk flat earth. And they, they didn't know. They just literally, I mean, the, the daily beast, 
they were the ones that kind of figured it out first. They were interviewing Logan outside and Logan couldn't even string a sentence together. So we, they knew it by that time I was already on a plane. So I, I was, I was fine. I didn't lose any sleep. That's a ballsy, uh, that's a bruiser Brody. No, well, I still look the kid. Yeah. Look, when it is the scorpion and the frog. And that is if the kid is done, he's never made a serious video in his life up until that point. Not one. It is like it's like no no he's gonna do it yeah yeah it stands the reason he was gonna make a comedic movie oh yeah it's like what in people people are saying oh no yeah he he he'll actually do a legit piece this time it's like based on what <laughs> it's like he he has nothing nothing backing it plus he is seriously about as sharp as a bag of wet hair I mean he's one of the dumbest celebrities I've ever I've ever heard of in my life. Sorry, I don't want to keep going off. I could talk about this kid all day. You better be careful, Mark. You're gonna get one of those one of those takedown videos like they do. <laughs> oh, they do takedown videos. That's the big thing on YouTube where they like they just shit on someone for like ten minutes and they. Oh, bring it. And they bring and they bring receipts as the kids say. Yeah, but, but what whatever I I would yeah Lo, Logan's half my age. <laughs> I would love to to scrap with Logan. Although I wouldn't. I mean, I'm too old to. To do a boxing thing, uh, how about? Isn't he like a boxer though, dude? I wouldn't, I wouldn't fight Logan. Paul. No, no, no. I, I know. Like, if I'm, I'm, if like, I'm playing, I'm playing for I'm keeps. Du shit. Dueling pistols at dawn. Pick, pick your sidearm. That's how I do it. Let's just go for broke. Uh, winner buries the loser. <laughs> Drop mic. <laughs> there you go. Now, I, I got another kind of tough question for you. Uh, how much? This isn't the tough part. This is, <laughs> this is oh, the precursor. No. How much have you looked into the history of all this? The flat earth theory? Because, like, as I said, I've done pretty decent amount of research. The, the into deep history? How this started in, like, the. You know, oh, no, not, not as much as you might think. Um, I followed. Because, I mean, there wasn't that much. I, when I first looked into it, I, I went as far back as um, uh, the Orlando Ferguson map, really. That was really where I, I won. That's what I kind of based my early models off of the, the 1830s. Uh, model so going but going all the way back you know all the way back ancient cultures of course i've looked at the ancient cosmology drawings yeah no, no, no. i'm talking about the modern one you kind of hit yeah 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 i mean i've i've, so, I've so do you have do you do you sort of go ahead. no no go ahead go ahead well i was just gonna say do you have an understanding sort of of how this has evolved over the last let's say 200 years because it really the flat earth movement we're talking about now Began back in like 1830 with uh, Sammy Robot, yeah, yeah, yeah. also known as Parallax. Yep. So, yep. have you have you kind of followed how it went since then? Sort of. I mean, you gotta remember that back then. I mean, the the optics of the day and the technology that we had really hadn't progressed, really hadn't evolved until recently. Which is why when I tell people, I was like, look. All the old stuff, including the, the, the original or the Flat Earth Societies of only five years ago. I said up until that point, uh, if you treat it like software, that would be Flat Earth 1.0. And we, since social media came out, we're Flat Earth 2.0. So we don't even, a lot of us don't even look at the old stuff, to be honest. It's like, look, just grab whatever the okay. highest tech thing you have it is and just head out and start doing your own tests. True. I mean, we, what, we, there's, right, for, for, I mean, I know some of it, but not, not enough to where I, and I don't want to sound callous, not to where I even care because what, like the, like yeah. the early optics test, what does that do against someone with a, with a Nikon P1000 that just came out last year? I mean, it's, it's, it's night and day compared to, you know, what we can do, like putting an infrared filter on a plane, a plane, the planes that didn't exist. Now we have tools. The reason why Flat Earth has resonated, it's not just social media. We, the reason why it spread so quickly, it isn't also isn't just the explanation is easier to understand than the, the heliocentric model. It's because we have tools now, the information tools and technology tools that are so, so much better than what they used to be back in the day. But go ahead. Right, right. Well, I guess the, the the point I'm trying to make. This is the <laughs> now we're getting to the tough part. Yeah. From my understanding of how this has evolved right. over the last 200 years, right. is that like everybody who becomes the face of this thing, right. it never ends like well for them. It's almost like a curse. Like every person who was a prominent uh, promoter of the flat Earth theory right. winds up like. It, it, you know, they, 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 it just goes to hell. 
You know what I'm saying? It just goes to hell. I, I, I was wondering if you knew about <laughs> I did. what I what I've come to call sort of like this curse. The, the curse like of flat every Earth. Person who was yeah, who was the face of flat Earth, like bad sort of. You know, they didn't. They, they lived. One one person like ended up going to jail for a few years. Another person's like house burned down, was left with nothing. Oh, wow. Another person was like the was like uh, so overwhelmed he could have used the internet. Samuel Shenton uh, yeah. in the sixties, you know, was so overwhelmed with 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 correspondences that like he essentially got sick and and was you know living in this hellacious. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, at this, but he was you know he was like overwhelmed by this stuff and it completely exhausted him that was the that was the word i was looking for but yeah i'm just wondering you know two people tried they formed a city in illinois um where they actually taught flat earth in the in the classrooms and this was like in the early 1900s and both of the people the, the original guy who founded the city and then the guy who succeeded him they both like were eventually ousted in this like ridiculous scandal for both of them so it's just to me it's like there's a cycle I'm seeing here, <laughs> and, oh, I, you. and I'm genuinely wondering if you knew about this, I, and if, if if this, you know, maybe I'm telling you about it now, and I'm no, you you, you <laughs> are telling me to warn you, but you you are telling this me is about what it now. I've seen. This is what I've seen from the last two hundred years. It doesn't, uh, and thank you for telling me, by the way, and and I didn't know. It doesn't really surprise me though, back in the day, because I don't think they ever had the chance because of the media that that they were limited to of hitting any sort of critical mass. And as far as me put, right. putting myself out there, uh, I still am a big believer that everything's for a reason. And I absolutely tried to hide from this thing and, and played it as low key as humanly possible. Meaning in the beginning, all I did was I made a series of videos and I said, look, shoot it down. I, I'd love to get shot down so I can, I can kill my YouTube channel and yeah. be done with it. And put my name and my phone number, and I tried to be as transparent as possible in, in any history. You know, I put everything out there I had. It's like, you're not going to be able to dig up any dirt on me. You know, there's there's no weird things in my past that are going to gonna do anything. I'm not going to be... I wasn't even monetizing for the longest time, so I'm not going to get hit for fraud or anything like that. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. don't have a church or robes or chanting or a Bible. So it's not like I can be really painted into like a cult type thing so for, for <laughs> yeah. the most part we're pretty insulated um we, you know is it possible there could be a curse of flat earth and something bad could happen to me sure um i mean i always think when i go into the conferences that there might be some some nut that you know is so so pro science that there it's like oh yeah if i kill mark Sargent, you know maybe it'll stop the flat earth it's like that oh god no i hope that's yeah, yeah i don't no, no, no. i don't think that i don't <laughs> yeah no i just mean like I, 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 and I, I, I feel bad at sort of foisting this on you. No. Uh, you should read Christine Garwood's book on the history of the Flat Earth Theory, because that's where I learned about all these people who were, like I said, you're like the sixth generation of this. And as I'm reading it, every, every time the Flat Earth comes to prominence again, the person who brings it to prominence, like, it, it, it ends up being the worst thing that happened to them, as strange as that sounds. Well, and it's you know, like, part of it is... I think maybe because they live their entire lives and they never, this doesn't get resolved. I, I, you know I hear you. So I hear I guess, you. In a sense, are you prepared to live the next, through, are you prepared to die with all Oh, the absolutely. I know. I'll, I'll even take it. And let's, history says that you're probably going to have let, Let's end it on this, um, which is, I, I, not only am I prepared for whatever it is, but everything, let, let's do a retrospective really quickly. Everything that I've done so far yeah. has been unsolicited and really nothing but good things has happened i mean like for example this year just in 2019 flat earth was on tour i've done conferences where they flew me out to let's see los angeles um uk calgary um stockholm south carolina i was supposed to do one in ohio i've got one in dallas that's coming nice. yeah i know nice. we we've got i've got oh i'm sorry new auckland new zealand forgot about that and then, of course, I got to shoot the the, the commercial down in Australia. And again, I never picked yeah. up a phone. Um, when it comes to putting myself in the line, I'll, I'll, I even, I'm I'll even proactive about that. I Because people say, well, is there a way to prove, you know, is there something you can prove to science that will, that will really help solidify the flat earth thing? I go, well, aside from putting me in space, I suppose the astronaut suit challenge would work. 
which is, you know, I, I say, look, you find any <laughs> giant vacuum chamber, give me a NASA approved spacesuit, self-contained on this tethered stuff, throw me in a vacuum chamber, hopefully with another scientist who don't want to die alone, and pull the switch. Tell me how I don't die. Tell me it doesn't happen because the spacesuit cannot work the way it's advertised. And and so what my saying is like, look, I'm am I am I willing to die for the flat Earth cause? Yeah, I am. I'm, I am because I think it's I think it's right, right. It's that important. So if you I didn't mean like you're gonna take a bullet for it. I just mean look at dude. I know, I knew a lot of great people. Yeah. Stan Friedman, Jim Mars, yeah. Brad Stoger. They're friends of mine. Yeah. They spent their fucking lives on this. Yeah. And they never found out any answers. Yeah. So like, have you? Have you? Would the <laughs> I'm laughing out of nervousness in a sense or like anxiety but it's like have you grappled because i personally have i I'm, I'm fine with whatever happens but it's like have you have you understood that it's like you may never get to the bottom of this yeah yeah absolutely is is the journey alone worth it yeah it is uh for me it is it has been a i mean just four years the stuff that we have accomplished in the last well four and a half years has been amazing absolutely Absolutely amazing. So, would it be enough for me? Yeah. If 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 my plane augured into the ground in a twist of fiery molten metal tomorrow, uh, would would I die? It's like, yeah. Was, was that enough? Yeah. You bet. You bet. Because I've gotten so many emails from so many people that say just the idea, not even proven, just the idea of flat Earth was enough to change their life. It brought them back to a, a more centered sense of spirituality. It brought them back to a sense of purpose. It brought them back to, uh, you know, getting up in the morning and actually going out and, and what's important and what's not. And that alone for me was, is, is worth it. All just the, just the people that, that have changed their lives for a concept that I, you know, didn't, didn't create. I just shone a light on it, a different kind of light. Yeah. Yeah. So. I didn't mean to scare you. No, no. Are stuff. you kidding? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. It's just like, dude, honestly, I'm just telling you what I, what. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I go, down. I go like, in. Wow, this is pretty weird. No, no. <laughs> I, I go into these things, all, like all the conferences, you know, we have security at all these conferences. And yeah, there's been a few threats uh, over the years. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, no, but, no. I don't, I didn't. Yeah, no. I mean more just like. Oh, you mean like disappointing? Trend, no, none of these people were ever like fucking murdered. I'm just saying like. Did, it wears on you. Oh, I got to, you. I got to, you. To, no, to no, I don't like carry this to carry this question, this theory for decades. I mean, at least you're in a better position than some of these other people were because they didn't have the technology yeah. and everything. Like I, or way earlier in the conversation, I mentioned how I was going to ask you like what was under the flat earth, and they, uh, you probably don't know the story. Apparently, then then Samuel Shatton, who was the guy in the '60s, who was like the main guy. He just got, and maybe this happens to you, he just got endless letters from people asking that question. Like, what's asking the basic questions I asked you at the start. And, that, the and that's fine. And like, that's fine. I, that, for me, that that is worth <laughs> it. Absolutely for me. I, I get those letters, and some, you know, I just direct. I mean, I, some I can tell that they're already on the journey, and there's plenty of resources. The big difference is they have access to so much content that most of the time, by the time I get back to them, I usually give them a grace period. And if they write me twice, that's when I usually get back to them because there's so much content out there right. that by the time I get to them, it's like, oh, yeah, I already found the answer to my question. That's the big difference now to where it's a lot of it. Yeah, like imagine being a dude like in 1965 oh, yeah. getting that, getting a handwritten letter. Oh, yeah, then, <laughs> you you're, then to, you're screwed. You have to sit down and write this person back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, well, you can't just send like an FAQ to the, to the guy and be like, well, here's how it works. So. Yeah. There you go. Well, it's interesting. What should I expect in Dallas when I get down oh, there? Bedlam. It's it's going to be amazing. Um, all, all the speakers, uh, they're going to be doing some great presentations. The lobby is really the, where the action is, though, because there's people. They, they don't want to sit, sit in there. Always. At every yeah, they don't ever want to yeah. sit. And the bar. After well, of right? course, in the bar. Yeah. With a hotel like that, I think it's free. If you have a room there, you have free happy hour for like two hours. Um, and we close the bars there most I'll of the time. A lot of fun. Um, great presentations, great exhibits, great, um, uh, little projects that people are working on. And of course the media and celebrities that may or may not show up. I mean, will Alex Jones show up? Don't know. Will Eddie Bravo show up? Don't know. Uh, Owen Benjamin's going to be there. Great. Fantastic. Glad he's doing it. Um, uh, just it's, it's a cool setting. What, what? Who's Owen Benjamin? Owen Benjamin? Comedian? 
Yeah, who is uh, he? A comedian. I'm, now I'm showing my age. Uh, but, no, no. He, he, oh, okay. He's a younger comedian, but he's, he's a good guy. Um, but what, what you really see when you're down there is the energy. That is, you're going to be walking through people that generally, you'll see more smiles on your, on their face than just about any other convention, especially conspiracy based that you can ever think of. Uh, it's a really, it's a cool thing where people are just sharing ideas and they're really excited and the energy just never, ever stops. So just, just be ready and feel free again, ask any question you want to anybody and, and people will talk to you and, and they'll, they're more than happy to share. Have I given you the impression that I'm afraid to ask? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I'm just, just saying that anything? you can you don't, you don't have to work. You don't have to pick out a speaker. You could walk up to practically anybody. And I mean, this year is like a like a big year for for activism, street activism for us. So we're we're already pumped up. I mean, I did activism over in uh, Belfast and Dublin and Cardiff. They flew me over to, to do that. And it's it's fun. You know, we what is that? You walk around, you hand out yep, flyers, hand out flyers you know, in front of a big banner. It says the earth is flat. And, and you'd be amazed how many receptive people cock, walk up to you. And it's like, yeah, I got some questions. I mean, you don't get stuff thrown at you. You don't have people punching you. There are people. Yeah, of course, there's some science people. It's like, that's ridiculous. But it's like, of course, of course, it's I thought the same thing. But now I don't. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I've taken up a lot of your time. You gave us some extra time. I really oh, happy to do it. it. Uh, happy to do it. This was an amazing conversation. I had people sending me messages <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of the show that were like, "This is wild. This is like classic banal of America." Well, um, cool. If if well, so, can I can I uh, can I do a quick? You know, I wanted to go ahead. Go, go ahead. Mark. Well, I, I was about to say, um, I'm no, I'm ahead. doing something special for the conference. If anybody wants a free audio book, because I'm not, I the audio apparently is a, such a backlog on audibles that I'm not going to wait the five weeks. Um, I'm just going to start giving it out, and when it comes out on Audible, it's great. Uh, but if anyone wants a free copy of the uh, the audiobook, all you have to do is go to um, tinyurl.com slash FEC. That stands for Flat Earth Clue, so FEC2 Audio. That's it. It's one click. You don't have, you don't have to put your email in or anything. You did some immediate download. The zip file goes to your machine, and there you go, the, the book I just finished. There you go. Yeah. Are there gonna be? Didn't I see something that are gonna be copies of the thing? Uh yeah, the hard copy. Well, if audio, or I'm sorry, if Amazon fulfillment finishes their stuff, yeah, anyone that goes to the conference will get a free autographed copy of the of the the hard copy of the book. Uh, but if we run out, I'm giving audio right. copies. So I'm I'm hoping they all show up there in time. It, it's tricky, but we'll we'll hope. Cross my fingers. There you go. All right. Well, I hope that you and I can. Uh, at some point, connect at the event. Yeah, absolutely. Talk, just make I really enjoyed this conversation. Yeah, make sure you grab me and just uh, say, "Hey, it's me." And uh, yeah, I'd be I'm happy happy to talk to you again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I came into this this conversation, I kind of wanted to at least sort of show that my bona fides, in a sense, and I'm not like one of these people who doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about, yeah. as far as well, at least the history of all this. Right. I still need to learn. <laughs> <laughs> more about what all what all the mechanics of it are but to me i think the reason why i'm interested in all this and again i gotta re i gotta suggest you recommend uh, i gotta recommend you read that uh christine garwood book okay because i find like the fact that this has been around for 200 years it predates all the other fields right like it's older than bigfoot it's older than ufo right so to me it's like where did this <laughs> that's the fascinating part to me about this community right um, and so I'm going to be probably spending more time in the flat earth world and I'm looking forward to seeing you in Dallas. And, uh, like I said, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. No, no. Happy to do it. And if you need anything else, just, uh, shoot me an email and I'll get you the resources you need. All right, brother. Thank you very All much. Right. Have a good Have night. Have a good one. Bye-bye.